we'll uh, ask, uh, I'll shoot an email over to uh, 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 Robert uh, in uh, one minute because I'm uh, sending an email now uh, or in, I'm sending a board email in one minute. Bobby, do you want to start the stream? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to stream. Oh no, if Augie doesn't know, who does? I don't see the button. Um, um, what about the record? No? Record is recording. Let me get close to a second. I set, set it up. That's what I started it off. All right, we're going to wait a minute. Oh, thank to, you. Uh, technical difficulties worked out. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mayor. Hi, Mayor. Hi. Hi, Jason Pinto. Hello. We have, Hi. We have we have two employees on the uh, call tonight. We have Mr. Pinto and uh, Sandy DeRuza. Uh, so we're going to ha handle their items first, so that they can get home to their families. Well, that's his fault. That's all, Well. Here we have Cliff, for the television audience, here's Cliff. If he can't fix it, nobody can, and we won't have a meeting. Uh, that would be ironic if it were our very last Zoom meeting and we couldn't do it. There was an elevator guy named uh, Chris Hill, and he was the best elevator guy I ever met. And if I had a problem and Chris came, I would tell the building, if Chris can't fix it, you just have to take the stairs. <laughs> All right, we ready? Yep. Hey, good evening, and welcome to the Village of Marinick Board of Trustees work session for March 14th, 2022. May I please have a motion to open this work session? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, next item is adoption of the agenda and your motion to adopt the agenda. Where's Victor? I don't here? know, it wasn't my day to watch. Okay. Um, I just have a couple of questions. We keep adding, putting stuff on the work session and having it for the regular session. Um, and that's really not what our policy is. So, um, I think we need to be more mindful of that. Okay. But they're all staff things, so I'll talk to the staff about it. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Orgy, call roll, please. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Okay. Uh, well, you get that off the screen. Got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first item we, we, when we were talking uh, last week, Chief DeRuza uh, had an item that we needed her input on at a regular meeting, uh, not at a work uh, at a not at an executive session, and that's the public safety customer service tool. Hello, Chief. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. This is item 1M. Uh, Chief, could you just give us a, an explanation of this item? Yes. So um, I had sent an email previously with um, a little bit of a, um, a video and um, a brief description of what this is. So it's called Guardian Score. And what it is, is a customer service satisfaction survey tool um, specifically used for police officers. So um, the company equates it to something similar to Uber. So what would happen is if the officer um, interacts with a member of the community, he or she would give that person a business card, which has a unique URL code that the person would then scan and they would access um, a customer satisfaction survey. Um, and what's also different with this company is they don't just ask, you know, was the officer nice? It talks about things like, were they transparent? Did they show good listening skills? Were you, did you feel that you were treated fairly? Were you treated professionally? Um, so once that uh, they thought that tool, that survey, 
It then gets uploaded um, to a database. So we're able to gauge how our officers are interacting with the community and also how each individual officer is performing. So if we can identify that there's an issue with an officer, we can use that data and we can then address it with that officer. Um, it also would go towards the evaluation process. So we could also retrieve that data and look at how many interactions they've had and if they've been positive or negative. Um, so what I'm proposing is to enter into a pilot program with this company. It would be a three month pilot. And if we like what the outcome is like what the results are, then we can go into a, a further uh, long-term uh, one-year agreement with them. Uh, Sandy, a, qu a question. Um, you have the interaction. You give the member of the public a card with a you know, UL code or whatever it is. Then that person has to then log in or, is so, it, or, or, or are they contacted uh, does the officer give the, the contact information and, and somebody else contacts them? Nope. So it's, it's, they can access it either two ways. So if an officer were in, have an interaction with you, he or she would give you that business card. You could either use your phone and scan the URL code, which would bring you to the survey, or you can just log into it yourself to the survey, and then you would put in that specific access code. And it's a one-time code. Specific to that officer. At, at so that time. The, the question, forgive me, Lauren, let me just follow up. The question then is how does the, the resident or the person that it comes in contact with the police officer uh, understand that this is confidential, that it doesn't have it, you know, that uh, it doesn't go through the officer, is what I'm trying to get to. Right, I understand. So they I feel will, comfortable uh, enough to do, to use it is what I guess I'm getting. Sure. To. Sure. So I would have to confirm just on the identification card. I'm just looking itself to see if it says that. Um, but basically, what would be like I said, I would have to just double check the card. But I believe when it says on there it's an anonymous survey, and again, it's a, it's a one time code. So the officer would just say, you know, thank you very much, have a nice day, and please take my business card, which also um, includes an anonymous survey. And then that's how they would access it. And would, would there be ability for the public to access this uh, this survey online? I mean, uh, rather no. than just okay, it's just via uh, the card. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they call in, and it's it's a voice recording type thing, or does it go automatically into a database? I'm not quite sure how it gets transmitted. Right. So what they would do is they, they would either fill it out on their phone or they would log in at home to that website with the specific code that's on the card. They would, it's about eight questions. They would check off information. There is a space to put comments if they would like to. They hit send and then it goes into a database that is held by this company, Guardian Score. And then only members of the police department can access it as again, as a, uh, as a tool to evaluate officers and evaluate their interactions with the community. So the, the officer the officer is identified, but is the member of the public identified? No. Okay, I think it's important that we have a way of communicating that when the card is given, because a lot of people may not feel there, there are a lot of things that go on these days with you know surveys. Um, Certainly, they're not as anonymous as they might be suggested. And this sounds like it is really anonymous, but we need to communicate it in a way that is meaningful. And I don't, uh, I, I don't know how to do that, but that's something that I think the idea is great, you know. And the execution, you know, needs to be done in a way that people are protected. Sure, and I understand that concern. And you know, we can once we announce it, we can put something out there that it is an anonymous survey. Um, and, you know, I will put it on the website and uh, introduce it that way. But when when the survey comes up, right? Is it a is it a QRC, uh, QRC code? One of those that you 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 take with your camera, or you just put it. Correct. In yep. So it's on the business card itself. So that little URL code is on the actual business card, and yeah. they would they could either scan that from their phone, just or again they can just log phone. in at home. Mm -hmm. When you do that, right? You say you scan it from your phone. Could it then say this is an anonymous survey, so people, uh, 
what company? Um, I can follow up with the company just to confirm that. Okay. We just ask. Yeah. Sure, of course. Uh, okay, well, anybody else? No, yeah, I, just first, do you think that three months is enough of a trial? Is that enough time to get a sense? So, you know, I think since this is the first time that we're doing it, I, I don't have an issue with doing a pilot program just to see how the interactions work, what their data collection is like. Um, this is, we would be the first uh, in agency in New York to use this company. Um, and so I, I would feel comfortable conducting a pilot first, I think. Yeah. Um, and then this way we can get at any of the kinks. One thing that they were able to do upon my request is to also have a Spanish language survey as well. Oh, so they incredible. have now incorporated that. So now they'll have the option of whether they want to complete the survey in English or Spanish. And then it's just one QR, it's the same QR code, it just generates a random survey. That's correct. And it's only a one-time use mm -hmm. code. So once the, someone accesses that code and uses it, it can never be used again. So do the police get a whole bunch of different cards then? So what will happen is right. So they will provide the agency with individual cards for each officer. And so for example, if an officer gets 50 cards, each of those cards will have a unique identifier on that card. And will they then be instructed that when you have an interaction with a, a member of the public, you're to hand them this card? Would that be part of the instructions? So that is correct. So um, one of the questions that I actually asked, well, how do you know that they're going to give out the card? So, um, you know, part of it is if the engagement is through a traffic stop and the vehicle is, has, is equipped with the uh, video and audio, we're able mm -hmm. to capture that. Um, other than that, it's going to be just random kind of surveying to see um, that they've been given the card, whether it's asking them um, or just doing follow-up. For example, if someone reports a crime and the detective is following up, the detective can then ask the person, by the way, when you met with this officer, did he give you a business card? So there are different ways to try to ascertain that the card was given to them. Lou, uh, Chief, uh, do you will know who the people answering the survey are, who, who they are, no? No. So you have no idea, I mean, uh, uh, not to be a uh, police, if I were a police officer, I might give them to my friends and say, give me a, give me a good Yelp review. I mean, how do you know it's it, it's a real thing? Right, I mean, listen, and, and, right. I mean, you hope that people don't do that and, and you don't know, yeah. you know, 100%. Um, but, you know, I would like to think again, that they understand that this is part of a tool and it's, it's we do want to capture, you know, both negative and, and positive and see how we can improve, you know, if we need to do that. Um, so it is an honor system for the most part. And, um, you know, it's just a, a coming upon me to encourage the officers to make sure that they're doing that and doing it correctly. And, and Chief, so uh, a, a person fills out the questionnaire and do you get a notice or, or superior gets a notice or a lieutenant? So, right, so what'll happen is we don't get any notification. All the data is captured on their website, this particular company, and then certain administrative personnel, so myself, lieutenants, will have access to view this data. And again, part of the reason why we want to be able to use this data is to see, you know, have we had negative or positive interactions with the community? How is this officer behaving? Do we have any problem officers? Things like that. Okay. Well, and also one here. of the, um, one of the things that also came up as if you remember as part of the police reform and reinvention committee meetings, um, we did conduct a survey and there was discussion about maintaining an online survey or something of that nature. So mm -hmm. this would actually um, be in line with that recommendation. Trustee Natchez. Chief, uh, I think this is great. I, okay, uh, a policeman stops somebody. Then. Um, there is a discussion or whatever. Is there a record of that, that the policeman you know, has when the ticket is not issued or summons is not issued? Yes, so the couple of times that, so we would document any interaction. So if a, for a couple of ways, if it's a traffic stop, yes. If a complainant calls headquarters and they wanna report a crime or they wanna report something, it's documented. If an officer has an interaction with someone where they're obtaining any kind of information, then yes, that's captured. Okay, because it would be interesting to have those numbers tallied you know, per day and the number of surveys that come back. 
Sure. So that could be, you know, part of the pilot. And of course, there would be a little bit of a, a learning curve, I'm sure, with it, where officers sometimes might just forget that this is going to be a new thing where now they have to give out a business card. So, you know, there would be a little bit of, a, like I said, a learning curve with that. But uh, okay. yeah, I, I think that the uh, officers would be on board. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, but I think the card has to have something that says this is anonymous. Um, you know, and if it doesn't say that, then I think we're not really achieving what we need to achieve in terms of people being willing to. Sure. What I can do is it's, I don't know if I can actually try to access it while I'm here, but um, I can look in my prior emails from the company just to see there is a, a copy of the card that's on it to see if it says anything on there about anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else on the board have questions about this? I just, it, Mike, what happens in terms of creating public records that are available under FOIL, is that going to be another series of documents that are going to get FOILed, or is it because it's on another website? It's not actually a public document. I mean, that's a question maybe for the lawyers, not for the chief. Go ahead. Yeah, are the officers required to give these cards out, or is it? I mean, because if, if an officer has a bad interaction i mean he, he said i'm not going to give this guy a card so he can, he can go complain about me i mean uh, uh, how, how do you know that the information you're getting is accurate so again so what we would have to do is have some kind of an audit process you know just to do random checks to see if it's been given um and if someone really has a negative interaction a lot of times we'll know about it whether the, the person comes in and complains um or if we check uh, a traffic stop we see it's on video um, so listen, I don't think, you know, anything is going to be 100% perfect, um, but the, the companies that have used this tool have given it high praise um, already. It's being used um, a lot of places down in Virginia where this company started. Um, so again, we would be the first ones in this area um, to utilize their services. So that's why I think even more so that this pilot program might be the best way to go. So this is on, it's $3,500, I think, right? Uh, it, it's it's on the agenda for the regular meeting. Is everybody okay with this being on the agenda for the regular meeting? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I don't have a I don't have a problem with it. I, I, I... Okay, thanks. No, what were you saying? I, I am. I just want to I just want to just understand whether it's going to cause more staff work in terms of of foil fulfillment of foil requests. Well, we, we, we can't Bob, do you have a opinion on that? You know, it's 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 a little bit complicated given the new law. You know, that's about a year old regarding police disciplinary records. Um, my, I suspect that these reviews, if you will, will be foilable, but I'm not prepared to tell you for sure. I have to look at it a little more closely to be able to tell you for sure. Victor, did you have your hand up? Just asking how, to, how we're going to change this for the three month adjustment of the, because I think the resolution has to be changed, correct? Or no? The, the reason we wrote it for the three month is because that's an appropriation that gets us through the remainder of this fiscal year. If this is something we want to continue with, you know, we can budget for it uh, or we can, you know, come back to the board in Jan, uh, in, in, as, at a future time. But we were just trying to get through this fiscal year uh, uh, with the requested transfer. Okay, so it, the there's no need to change anything on the resolution that's on for regular session. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, Sandy, while I have you here, uh, on just quickly on another subject, which, which, what's the status of the body counts? So we were awarded the grant. So we're, we've gone through the process of accepting the grant because you have to officially do that. Um, and then they, what we start with, we have a meeting scheduled for next week with the um, persons who awarded us the grant, myself and, and Augie and a couple of members of my team. So the first step with that is reviewing the policy um, that we have proposed for the body camera, um, for the body worn cameras, send it to the grantees uh, or the grantors to make sure it's in line with their parameters. And then we have to ensure that the PBA um, is on board with that policy. So that would be the next step. And then we can go through the process of 
uh, getting the new quotes because as you know, usually quotes only last for a certain amount of time. So we would just have to get additional quotes um, from the company. But really the first step is reviewing the policy, making sure that the PBA is on board with the policy and then submitting it for review. Okay, so it's, it's in the process. Correct. Thank you, Chief. So this will be on for the regular meeting. Have a good evening, Chief. Thank you for showing Thank up. you. And what I will do is I will email any additional information that I'm able to find right now. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Okay. The next up is uh, Mr. Pinto. Uh, Jason is on for two items, the paving of Harbor Island lots and roadways and the lights on lands and field. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Jason, why don't you start with the paving of the parking lots? Good morning. Uh, good uh, evening, Mayor and Board. Thanks for having me. Uh, so the people who don't know, this is Jason Pinto. He's the head of the uh, our recreation department. Doing an excellent job. I'm sorry, Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the paving of the parking lot. So as you know, if anyone's been down in Harbor Island Park uh, recently, and I believe we attached a bunch of images to the agenda uh, that illustrate the uh, uh, disarray of the paved uh, driving areas of Harbor Island Park. Uh, so uh, Jerry uh, had our DPW, assistant DPW foreman go out and get a quote from Morano uh, for the price, which I believe is uh, in your uh, packet. Um, you know, we get a lot of people that use the park, I mean, in, in a daily basis. Um, we estimated just quickly, based on activities and daily parking numbers and voting numbers, that over 100,000 patrons could visit Harbor Island Park on a yearly basis between all the activities we run. And that, and I think that's actually, it probably is a little bit higher than that. Um, you know, we bring in about 130 or so thousand dollars a year on the parking, daily parking and seasonal parking permit fees. Uh, so we do generate revenue from people parking in the park, but it, it's in pretty rough shape. Um, I would hate to see uh, someone trip in a pothole. Uh, some of them look like they're bigger than potholes at this point. They're, they're pretty deep. So uh, there's a lot of spider webbing and cracking. Um, so DPW does the best they can do every year trying to fill them in. But uh, at some point, uh, it needs to be uh, repaved. So it's been, uh, it's been 30 years since the uh, parking lot has been paved. The last time it was paved was 1993. So it's almost 30 years that the parking lot has not been repaved. So, question: um, the repaving is is milling out the existing asphalt, and what about the bedding? Is anything being done on that? On the what? The bedding for the asphalt. Yeah. So, so we're we're doing um, we're milling an inch and a half, and we're going two inch o overlay. Uh, what happens is when you do the milling, you determine or you find out that there might be some um, some areas that need to be um, uh, have more attention uh, as far as the bedding. So that that doesn't you call it the bedding, we call it the the bottom course. Um, and so we don't really know that until the time comes. But from what we see as far as the paving and the condition of the paving and the problems that we're having, it's not the undercourse or the base course, it's the top course that's causing us a problem. So by milling an overlay, uh, we eliminate the problem of the spider webbing, the constant potholes, and the poor condition of the um, poor condition of the of the of the actual uh, parking lot itself. If you look so, at the pictures, you can see that everything is about two inches or so deep, and that's the extent of our uh, our repairs. And so what we're looking to do is mill the entire top course and then add two inches of new new paving, which um, for all intents and purposes will last probably over 20 years. What, one of the problems we have, and I'm glad that's being done, but I, I think I don't know that there's an answer to this. We have a very high water table and tremendous uh, you know, uh, freeze heaves because of that. Mm -hmm. And bringing all the uh, snow down and putting there doesn't necessarily help us uh, in the long term. Um, so the question is, is there anything that we can do? I'm glad it's lasted 30 years, but I'm yeah. not sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about um, 
if there's something we should be doing that gives us a you know a longer life, you know whether that's been looked at because that's a big issue. I don't know if you can extend the paving longer than 30 years and continue to repair it the way we have. I think 30 years is the maximum you're going to get. You would see if there were issues with, what you see is the potholes filling up with water or the area um, that are spiderwebbed filling up with water, um, the water gets underneath the, the, the top course and then that's how it pops and that's how the asphalt pops. You would see larger um, issues and problems if the base course wasn't appropriate. So I'm pretty comfortable that for a 30 year parking lot, it has withstood a significant amount. It just can't last longer than that. And, and hopefully after the uh, New York Department of Transportation is done with their I-95 work, we will get that uh, area back by the highway where we used to dump the snow. Yeah, we, we lost that. We lost that for a couple of years now already, so. Yeah. Folks that don't know, the village was, uh, you know, we worked in tandem with the uh, New York State Department of Transportation. They let us use uh, that area right before 95 when you're going down um, Maranek Avenue. And we would take the snow from Maranek Avenue is where we removed the snow. And we would store big piles of it there. Uh, but now they're doing a project. I guess every 20, 25 years they do a project and uh, they want their property back for a little while. But hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll redeem that because that was a very helpful to the community. The, the one that. thing, Mayor, if I could, the one thing that we are saving is the fact that we're piggybacking off of a, a, a Village of Scarsdale contract and we don't so, have to officially put it out to bid. We don't have to have, we basically had our, our employees do the takeoffs and then have a quote based on that uh, piggyback contract in Scarsdale. So we save a significant amount of money by not hiring you know, others that would charge us uh, to do all of the takeoffs and the bid specs and all of that stuff. And that would be a significant amount of money because it's, uh, it's over 400. Jason, what's the parking spaces? 400 and what? Uh, it's, uh, it's close to 500, it's like 488 spaces. Uh, right. Counting the sewage treatment lot, yeah. Yeah, almost 500 spaces. So. Victor had his hand up. Yeah. Well, I'm fully in support. Uh, but on that note, as Jerry was explaining, I think it, since the price tag is 492, mm -hmm. 125, I think that that uh, is an up to that amount to be in the author and the in the result section. That's because precisely idea. that's a unit, so that we'd authorize this up to that up to that amount. And, and I want to point out that the area behind the sewer plant is not included because we have a commitment from the county to repave that entire area since they have been the primary users from the sewer uh, project. So we save a little bit of money by, uh, by having the county um, stick to their word regarding that. But thank you. That's a good idea, actually. And re, re, uh, so we can change the resolution then, everybody in agreement? Yeah. Okay. Uh, repainting the, the lines in-house as well. Yeah, we're repainting the lines in-house, yeah. Dan, Dan Natchez. So, um, I'm very much in favor of it, uh, but was this on the capital project uh, list? It was on uh, the paving project. It was part of the paving project that we were going to do for the village, but it wasn't specifically itemized as a Harbor Island Park uh, parking lot. And I think I think Jason, we we run the turkey trot. Do we run the turkey trot every year out of this? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. From the, the from the circle. So what's interesting about repaving this is that um, some areas of the park are not only vehicular traffic, but they're also pedestrian walkways. The circle, yeah. Uh, campers, uh, there's crosswalks, so cars and people use a lot of these spaces. So. Yeah, yeah. My my, my big concern. My big concern is the people. So when, when a car going 5, 10, 12 miles per hour hits a two inch pothole, it's not devastating to the, to the you know, but it's, it's the, it's the running, it's the bicyclists, it's the little kids. It's that Scooters. constant pedestrian traffic that's there. Um, it's all not, it's, a, it's a not easy to learn how to ride your bike in the circle near the pavilion when we got potholes and that's a popular spot for learning how to ride your bike in the summer. So, yeah. All right. Is everybody I, around? I, 
I think it's great. I mean, I'm glad we're doing it. Um, before the pandemic, we talked about having kind of a list of, of a serve, you know, when we did all that paving in 2019, we yeah. were going to have a schedule and a list. And I know that's one of the things that we haven't done, but maybe we need to try and get back to that. So, so, so I'm ready for that. We already have the list of uh, roadways and the condition that they're in. We're, we're, so in the next few months, so the asphalt plants haven't opened up yet. We're right. trying to grab the first out of the gate uh, um, so that we can get this done before um, obviously Memorial Day. Right. But um, the, uh, the roadways will come to this meeting uh, in, in the next three or four meetings. Because we have a bunch of, we have a lot of chips money to do this with, right? We've yeah. Got so the chips money will be for the road. This will have to be, you know, out of our anticipated revenue and, and our- You can't use chips uh, money for a parking lot. No. Uh, use it for right. roadways. Let's move on. Everybody's over. I would have this on the agenda. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank the you. next up, Jason, lights on lands of field. Uh, and if so you've been here a long time, you know lights on land of that, that, that was That was a big, big fight years ago. Oh. Go ahead. Um, so the the lights which were originally sold sometime in the 80s uh have uh they've been the same light since original installation the original lifespan was 89 the original lifespan was 25 years so we're well past that i was born in 89 is 32 years so we're well past its uh, original lifespan um she's so young it doesn't i'm not helping anybody go ahead keep going <laughs> um Closer. So the main benefit, obviously, like any other lights we have is in our home and on our streets is, is conversion to LED. You're going to reduce costs by at, at minimum 53%, uh, could be as high as 80, uh, depending on the dimness or the light level that we have them on. Um, so that's one benefit, your reduction energy costs, you're saving the environment by taking CO2 off the road, um, CO2 out of the um, environment. Um, reduction in maintenance costs. The big thing is Moscow covers maintenance costs of these lights for 10 years, 100%. Right now, we try to get every two years, we're spending like $5,000 setting somebody up there, an electrical contractor to change bulbs uh, because it's that old halogen incandescent bulb that takes a long time to warm up. And they do go out uh, pretty frequently and that's expensive to replace those. So we won't have to worry about any of that for 10 years because Moscow will take care of that. Uh, the lights themselves last incredibly longer than like a, a regular bulb, just like your house. Um, so uh, that's that's a, a plus. Um, they will be uh, efficient and, and remote operation, which is key. So we can turn them on and off via schedule, via our phones. Uh, so that will uh, allow us to schedule youth programs without having to have an overtime pr uh, person from the parks department there to turn the lights on and off. We will be able to do it remotely, uh, which is which is uh, will open up a plethora of options for youth leagues in terms of affordability of using the fields. Um, we're also going to put some security lighting below the lights that will be on when the lights aren't on, so that way we have some illumination in the park. Uh, the park can get dark at night, and there's a lot of people walking, especially in the winter when it gets dark at five o'clock at night. So those lower lights will be good to help illuminate the area, be a little bit more uh, safe. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, the New York Power Authority, who, who we uh, pay our, our electrical bills to, has minimum demand fees. Uh, so basically, uh, the Power Authority uh, charges us a percentage based on how much energy we use monthly that says uh, we need to store up X amount of energy to, to, to save, to, to turn your lights on, because we use so much energy that they have to store it, and they call it a minimum demand meaning they need X amount of demand to, to keep our lights on. So we're gonna reduce those dramatically because we're gonna reduce our kilowatts and that fee is based off the kilowatts we use on a monthly basis. Um, so there is a return on investment, which was in the quote. Uh, the return is uh, a 10 year utility electrical savings of $129,000 and change, reduction of 289 tons of CO2. Um, and uh, based off just that, the system will pay itself within 19 years, and the, it's expected at a 30 or more year. I mean, this was at 32, so I would expect this one to go a, a little bit longer than our current system. Um, so it's all good stuff. Um, it's on a purchasing agreement through SourceWell, so uh, that satisfies the village's purchasing agreements. And uh, the time frame, it takes about six to eight weeks uh, to order the material. Um, we do have active seasons, so it would probably be in November of 2020, 
uh, two would when the work would get done and it takes uh, you know a few weeks and, and we'll be ready to go. Um, so with that, I thank you for for hearing me out. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. I have one. I have one uh, item, uh, Jason, that you may have missed. I don't know. Um, you were talking pretty fast, and you're very young, so I might have missed it. But the uh, but the um, this was number one on on uh, on your priority list. This was number one um, yeah. to be completed or or asked to be completed in in the year 21 22. So this was this is right on target uh, for uh, for the capital project prioritization schedule. Uh, yeah, we were we worked on this pre-pandemic, then the pandemic kind of slowed capital spending down for obvious reasons. Um, but it's important as a number one because uh, uh, from an operational financial standpoint, we're just throwing money away by by using old technology. Uh, so so it's, it's in the important overtime. We, in the overtime yeah, to turn on the overtime from right. It's just uh, the 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 sports leagues can't really our youth can't really use it because it costs so much, and the village is not going to take a loss on turning the lights on. And having an overtime play, uh, so so it's going to be a benefit not only for just our regular leagues at night, but but also the kids in the community. Trustee Lucas. So th thanks, Tom. This is I I'm the liaison to Rec and Parks, and this has been on the agenda for more than three years. And um, I know the the delay, the pre-pandemic delay was was a real an earnest attempt on the part of Jason and his staff and the grant writer to get some funding uh, yeah. working with Dan and they just haven't been able to get grants for it so right. you know I think it's something we probably should have done three years ago there was a, there was a hope that we get some grant money to offset it but we haven't and you know we would have been saving we would have been seven years into the time saving so I think it's something we absolutely should be doing good thank you well, I, I can tell you from a youth sports perspective 1977 I was 16 years old I played my first baseball game under the lights in park on 53rd street and 11th avenue and I still get a chill thinking about it. It was so cool. So for, for kids who never played on the lights, they're gonna love it. Because you know, it, it feels like you're at Yankee Stadium. You know, if you, if you close your eyes, really use your imagination. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, the other thing to note is uh, the, the, what they call light pollution is dramatically less. Uh, right now you get light that spills off onto the fan. You won't get that with this new system because it's so positioned that it'd be, it's, it's supposed to light what it's supposed to light and that's it. Uh, so it's pretty amazing uh, compared to now where uh, you get a lot of lights fill off because the technology is just so old. But right now how it works is we have to have an employee go down there, push the switch up, the game's all play, they play the games, he comes back and he sits there all night, he comes back, he pulls the switch out, locks the switch off, he goes home. And, and, and they have to get there about 20 minutes early because they have to warm up. You got to turn them on and they, yeah, they got to heat up and warm up and get ready to go. Like, like a grandmother's TV. You don't remember TVs because you were born in 89. You don't remember TVs with tubes. We, we had Not to sit really. there and actually wait to watch TV. Yeah. Then, then we had to get up to change the channel, Jason. It was awful. Oh, yeah. That's, I awful. wouldn't watch. <laughs> 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 Does anybody, I, I think that this is a great initiative. Uh, I'm in support of it. I, I'm, I'm glad that the uh, rec committee thinks so too. Uh, I'm fine for doing it. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Let's, yes. Fine with Bing. Okay. We got, I got a quick thumbs up from the whole crew. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. I appreciate okay. everyone. Have a good evening. Bye, Jason. Bye, Jason. All right. Do some good stuff tonight. Okay, let's go back to the agenda from the top. Uh, enforcement of multiple dwelling law. Jerry, I see you have a law for us. Hey. Well, this is um, something separate. Uh, at the last meeting, the board asked me to uh, work with the building department to try and establish a time frame when we could uh, provide an analysis, analysis for you on kind of the, the major differences between uh, the exist the building code and the multiple dwelling law. Uh, I spoke with uh, Frank Tavalacci, the building inspector. Uh, he's a little tied up with the Pandora's box, which is 169 Mount Pleasant right now. Uh, it's been, uh, you've seen some of the emails and uh, you're aware of some of the issues. Uh, our, our goal is to have uh, this analysis done 
by uh, mid to late April. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions or concerns? Nope. It, just for clarification, it is being enforced at the moment or is not being enforced? Um, it is being, I believe it is being enforced. Uh, I, one of the things that we have done recently is we have required uh, developers for whom this would apply to provide a, uh, a sheet or some sort of analysis uh, on the, uh, the codes and why it's more stringent. Uh, when I spoke to Frank, he's still getting a little bit of a uh, lack of uh, compliance from the developers, but I told him uh, just you know, get it done, and you know they need us more than than we need them, and you know we can if the applications are not submitted to his satisfaction, then they need to be submitted to his satisfaction. Thank you, Dan. Kind of like a zoning table that an architect has to apply. Has yeah, to apply. That, that, that's my thought exactly, Nora. I think that's a good idea. Even Thanks. if it's funky. Thanks. Right. Uh, community refrigerator. There's nothing new on it. Uh, that I know people are talking and uh, looking at different aspects of it. Um, it's going to be some time. Uh, I don't think we can remove it from the agenda until such time as there's something to come back to the board with, at which time we should put it back on old business. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I had a thought, just want to throw it out there, uh, because it, it really is about placement now. Uh, a place that might be easily accessible to folks uh, with uh, food insecurity and uh, centrally located, and but kind of out of the way, might be somewhere on Phillips Park Road. Uh, you know, the, the, the village has land back there. We have electricity there. Um, I, I think that, that, you know, because it, it's all about placement now, right? Well, I think, and manageable. And, and manageable, right. So. I, 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 I thought about it the other day when I was getting uh, Indian food. And uh, you know, we have a park there that's uh, very rarely used. And that, you know, there's, there's electricity there from the streetlights. So that solves a problem. So I, just, I would ask everybody to take a look over there and uh, give me your thoughts the next time we meet. Um, I, I, I think it's got to be managed well. It's got a, 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 there's a lot of potential for problems. I, uh, I know that the hunger task force is not interested in, in administering it. Um, so uh, the question is who is going to run this work. thing? Yeah. So if, if you have somebody, somebody's got to come to us and say, we want to run this. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't think uh, it, it's, I don't think I'm interested. Can, so Tom? Yeah, one more. So I spoke with Mr. Liberty today um, about another project, um, and he's the Mamaroneck High School teacher who does the original, he leads the original civics research group yep. of students. And um, some students in his, in one of his, in one of the years, it's now they've got, you know, four years worth of projects, um, had discussed it. There are, there are a couple of groups thinking about food insecurity, and it might be something, a project that the students a group of students might take, not right now, but in the future. So maybe not too distant future. So that's another group. So they would, you know, and then they have to figure out all of the community puzzling. It, it, that's, I mean, I, I, I'm glad we have kids to do it, but the thing about kids is they, they go to college. We, we well, saw that with, with the, uh, with the uh, scraps program. So yeah. I think well, yeah, I, I mean, I would say the scraps program is a different kind of program. And this is, you know, the, the ORCA program is like um, Girl Scout Gold Awards and Boy Scout Eagle Awards, where they have to create a project that is either completed or outlives them. The scraps project was just a, was a community service project that they, you know, that they decided to do and kept it going for a certain amount of time. So they would have to find a, a permanent partner. So it might, it just might, it, it might come to fruition that way too. 
Don't rule them out. Just do me a favor, if, if you folks can, in your travels in the next couple of weeks, take a look at Phillips Park Road and let me know what you think. I go there all the time because the Tompkins Avenue Bridge is out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Half the village is probably going past that. Yeah. Never went past it before. Yep. That's unfortunate. You're right. Everyone has Phillips to pass Just so for those of you who don't know, Phillips Park Road is named after former Mayor Artie Phillips. He was the first Democrat. Jerry, Jerry since you, we've mentioned Tompkins Avenue Bridge, can you give us an update of where that is? Uh, no, we're still waiting uh, for the report that we asked for from um, our bridge engineer, HVEA, um, and to present to FEMA a comparison of the condition of the bridge in May of 2021 and then in September, end of September 2021. So uh, when I have that report, I'll share it. And, and one of the other things FEMA asked us for was in terms of it being a reimbursable project was to prepare a scope of services and yeah. what, would, what would be required to uh, repair to the existing condition as opposed to uh, upgrading it to uh, complement the Army Corps project because you know, we would like to be in a position that if we have to replace this bridge, it be done to maximizing the benefits of the Army Corps project, right. as opposed to remaining in its current uh, hydraulic and hydrologic uh, configuration. I think, I think the, the length <laughs> of time that we wait for the bridge to be um, replaced, repaired, whatever it ends up being is, um, is unfortunately extended by the fact that uh, this is a uh, this is a structure that was damaged during a FEMA a disaster event, a declared event. So there's extension uh, in that in that case in itself. So it's going to be a little while, unfortunately. I'm just getting used to it. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be some time. So yeah, I make that turn all the time. Forget. I do too. I mean, I do, not when I'm leaving my house, but coming home. I just, yeah, just you know, you, 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 your mind isn't there and it's like, oh, darn, I got to go another circuitous route. Okay. Uh, American Rescue Plans Fund. I, I see the staff has pared this down. Uh, Jerry, you want to give us a little update? Um, yeah. So Mr. Sarnoff um, 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 included the memo. Dan, if you can share that memo, if you have it available. Do you have it? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen. Yeah. So we refined and, and reduced the priorities. Um, we focused more on the priorities that the board asked us to focus on. Um, and uh, we included a little bit more detail uh, in the... Uh, do, you, do you see the, the memo or is it... Yeah, we see it. Yep, yeah, we see it. So we, we provided the board a link of the program, uh, the Small Rental Development Initiative program that New York State has established that we would mirror uh, for our grant program. Uh, we would utilize uh, some of the information that they asked for, as well as uh, try to look at how the forms um, and how they approach uh, the grant uh, program and the requirements. The sewer rehabilitation project, obviously everyone knows that we received a $4.95 million grant from the state uh, of which 1.62 million is on us as a village match. Therefore, if we utilize $500,000 of this sewer rehabilitation project, and then some or most of the next disbursement that comes in in June or July of this year, we pretty much have our match addressed. And that's a significant uh, offset to this project. So in, in reality, the project or 5 million of the project uh, could be handled by ARPA money as well as uh, state grant money. Uh, and then of course we have the river gauges in there uh, for which we added um, the annual costs um, uh, in our budget this year, as asked, um, but we're, um, we're including the river gauges in there. Dan, I think you spelled gauges wrong. I think there's no U in it. I'm not sure. Uh, I believe uh, Bill Gates or whoever uh, right. designed Microsoft Word for their dictionary. So, so it really is, is a great discussion. We, we looked at a couple of innovative ideas. We've uh, We've asked the board and the board's desire was to pare it down to three major uh, initiatives. And, and that's, in my opinion, good work. And, and I appreciate it. Trustee Natchez. 
Stop um, sharing the screen. I'm very appreciative of uh, the memo and what you've done. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work on the different programs, but I, I have a fourth one that I would like to suggest uh, adding. Um, the area from the Avalon to Fenimore Road, basically in most of the area does not have any drainage on, the, on most of the roads. And <clears throat> this gets is a real problem. Uh, it's a real problem in light uh, rains and heavy rains. So I'd like to suggest taking $150,000 uh, of this um, uh, and putting it to a engineering uh, a study plan and drawings to implement uh, a real drainage plan, which would then complement the Army Corps plan. Um, From Avalon to Fenimore Road? Washington Avalon to Fenimore Road, yes. Yeah. Avalon Road in the town. You only catch basin. No, the, where I live and, and all the way through Washingtonville and then on the other side of the Shell Drake. I think that's what Dan's talking about. Yeah. You said on Grand Street, right? The, 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 how could there be no drainage? There's, there's, there's definitely drainage. There. There, there, there's, the only drainage seems to be at the intersections. The entire roads don't have drainage. Most of those roads are flat, do not have pitch. Um, some parts of a couple of the roads have pitch for maybe uh, a little bit, but not much. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but it uh, it's, a, it's an issue that's been tossed around for some time. I spent a lot of time walking at uh, and really getting to a better feel of it. And I think that we have the ability of using uh, this money, uh, you know, in a really long-term constructive approach. Well, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't pay for any drainage. It's just, you're just talking about paying for a study. Uh, more than a study and plans to implement. It, As it, I said, it wouldn't pay for the actual cost of doing the work. That is correct. You won't know that until you, you get through this. Yeah, my, my, okay. Uh, it's gotta be part of a large pool. Yeah, go ahead, Lou. I, I think it's that's gotta be, Dan, that's gotta be part of a larger uh, approach there. I mean, I, I, I live right there, so I know the situation you're talking about, but I don't know that that trumps uh, anything else that's in the, uh, in the flats or Washington bill. I mean, uh, it, it would just be like singling that out because we, we just uh, picked it at random. Um, I, 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 I would rather wait till we hire an engineer and have him give us an assessment of it, of, of if this was a needed project, other than basing it upon, you know, trustee taking a walk. I mean, it, it is a problem area. I mean, he's, he's, he's right about that, but the, the whole, the whole, the whole thing's a problem and it's been for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, We've been, we've been we've been at this uh, offer funds now for months and months. Uh, I, I, I don't feel comfortable throwing something in here at the end. May I? Yeah. I, I think I think it actually ties into what I said. Probably, I don't know how many times back, but probably the second time we discussed this. I think I missed the first discussion, so I. It was early January, so I think at the second session, I did mention that uh, this is a one in a lifetime opportunity to use funds to do things that will complement certain other projects. And if the number one priority, for me at least, is flooding, and in this particular area, this was one of those topics that I mentioned, but it never got kind of captured. This one and the study of the of the uh, aquifer of the, of the level there. Those two are central to other pieces, for example, even the affordable housing developments. So I, I do think that if the number one priority is flooding in this village, and actually I, I've seen various emails now saying, what are the priorities? What are the priorities of the board? I can stick to that one, number one, the yeah. flooding issue. And okay. I do, so I think uh, that Maybe the price tag should be F 150 for this and at least 150 to for other additional studies on how to improve that area to make it more resilient for flooding. Maybe study some of the 
of the impacts of the newer developments and getting up this area for, for a revised updates uh, in zoning. Okay. And so I, 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 I propose what? supporting what Dan, what Dan just suggested and doubling it up with additional um, resources to do all those additional other, other studies. And I did say this at the second meeting, probably our second meeting in January. I have, I have that in my notes too. And what I would add is there is a subsequent discussion about a moratorium, which is, you know, we're not, we are not efficient with moratoria, but about building in the floodplain until we get some kind of regulations. I, you know, the regulations aren't going to help. We need to figure out how to alleviate some of, we can't prevent flooding, but we need to be able to figure out some way of alleviating it in addition to the Army Corps plan. Okay, just, just so you know, I, mean, I, I have no problem with doing this, but just so you know, when there is flooding, it happens because the levels in the river are above the drainage area. So the drains, the storm drains, don't have an opportunity to be outlets into the river because the hydraulic pressure is coming the other way. Yeah. The, 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 so it, uh, putting it, Victor, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, putting in more storm drains is not going to change that problem because it doesn't change the hydraulic pressure. So while you know, it, it sounds good, but the engineering doesn't work. Victor, go ahead. He had his hand up. Yes, I, I two two quick things. I see I see a, a hand up, and since you're mentioning a kind of expertise and and who could know something about this, I think the head the chair of the flood mitigation is asking. I would like really to hear his voice. I see his hand up, uh, and he he's he, this is the second time he's the chair. He was there uh, yeah, several did, years I'll ago. Get, so I, 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 I saw as his hand up now. What do, you, what do you want to say? But Mr. Sorrow? Gelbert, I, I'm suggesting Mr. I'll Gelbert is giving an opportunity. I'll get to him. Dan Sonoff wanted to say something. We'll have another payment coming in. You know, what, yeah. we've, what we've talked about and proposed is for the first payment. You know, the second uh, round of funding is going to be coming in June or July. So, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to, do you want to talk about that separately or do you want to yeah. change everything now? No, there's, there's an election coming. Uh, uh, this is a priority. Go, go priority ahead, number go one. So, so let's yeah, get this yeah, one. We Gilbert. mentioned it. Go to Gilbert. Gilbert. You got him? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can't see you, Thanks, you. For, thanks for hearing me. So, uh, Mayor, I agree with you that when those rivers rise, the local storm drains have no place for the water to go. Absolutely. If you walk on Mamaronic Avenue, Mamaronic Avenue has been paved so many times it blocks all those flows from going into Columbus Park. So when we were on this flood committee, when I was on the flood committee in 2016, 17, one of the things I was saying, and it, it wasn't heard, was that if we could look at the levels the, of these streets, almost like they were you know, cur curves on the map, what do you call those lines on the map? The contours, right? Yeah. And then see, okay, because there are spots in that whole Washingtonville that as you said, Mayor, when that river gets high, there's no place for that water to go. So I think spending some money to have an engineer see what we could do when those rivers are full would be well worth it because I think, and, and I wrote a paper that got published on this, you could possibly use the streets as overflows, right? That if you look at the street next to the railroad um, on the, uh, next to the, the Sunoco gas station there, right? That runs right into Columbus Park. That Shell Drake runs, pops over there. So I don't know if this, this is a solution, but I think if we could get an engineer to look at that area, I don't know if we have to spend $150,000, but I think it's well worth a look at it. And if you look, read those village emails from the people, our villages, they're all complaining that they can't even walk in those areas because of, of the water. That's all I have to say on the issue. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I know that we have both talked about the hydrostatic pressure before, and I, I appreciate you remembering that. Lou, you have your hand up? Yeah. The, um, 
if we're going to put money somewhere, I would urge us to put it in the uh, dormant river maintenance program, which uh, which is uh, has thirty thousand dollars in it right now, and uh, go through and make sure that that river is uh, is not uh, blocked with uh, debris or or or, uh, or temporary dams or any of that. Uh, we haven't done it in several years, and uh, I don't think that helped us during Ida. I really don't. Um, and the other thing is that the river gauges probably should be maintained out of that fund if we can revive it. I don't know why it, it went dormant, but uh, it did a couple of years ago. Right? I, I, so I... I, I it didn't go dormant. It just never got spent. It was reduced during the pandemic, but it was funded from 2011 <laughs> through 2022, but apparently kind of not fully means. expended. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it was kind it was, of what dormant means. It, it was it was just a, a line on a piece of paper. Nobody made it. A, I mean, if, if flooding's a priority, that's got to happen. That's the last thing you cut. But that, 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 I mean, I think we should we should go back to it. It's a good time now. Is it so, if I may, to say something. yeah, go ahead. While you're right on your hydraulic pressure, they probably have problems of flooding when we don't have major floods in in uh, the those areas that I've specified. Uh, and that in with a proper drainage system, it would actually long term preserve the roads in. Um, uh, reduce the what I'll call flooding in the minor storms as opposed to the major storms. And in Ida, uh, you know, I, Ida was a, a you know an episodic storm, um, and uh, you know that would not this would not have solved it, but it would solve a lot of the other problems that we have in a lot of the other flood. So I'm in favor of, of uh, I using. Can tell you it, it, it wouldn't have affect. It wouldn't have helped in the 2007 storm. I can tell you that because I remember watching the water come out of the come out of the storm drain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, why don't we put? Wait, let me let me just finish. Why don't we put? It's my suggestion that we put 150 thousand dollars into a fund for engineering studies in the Washingtonville area to help flooding instead of us saying. What the what you know what the best you know study is? Let's hire an engineer and ask him to say you know if if we were going to spend money other than the Army Corps plan, how would it best be spent in Washington? Though mm -hmm. instead of coming up with our own pet projects based upon you know no science, let, let's hire an engineer to do the science. I think. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Dan. Um. That's what the proposal is, but it's not just Washingtonville. It's, no, it, it's not. side of it's Washingtonville, not according to the maps. Dan, so, your proposal is about a specific solution that has to do with storm drains. And Victor's proposal to. is about a hydrostatic study. My proposal is to let's have somebody that knows what they're talking about tell us what is the best way to spend our money to help reduce flooding. Everybody has a theory. I have my own theories, but I, I don't share them because I, 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 I don't have that credential. You know, I do know something about hydrostatic pressure from elevators. Uh, but you know, it, it's, it, it, I, I'm just saying I have no problem spending money to help flooding, but I don't want us to be you know, deciding which is the best study to do. I, I think that that is, you know, nothing but grandstanding and, you know, it's not going it, to, it, we might spend money on, on something that, 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 that has no value, that has no uh, intrinsic worth to, to stopping flooding. You know, I think, I think we should hire an engineer and say, listen, if we have extra money and we want to spend it to alleviate flooding in Washingtonville or in the surrounding area, what's the best course? Instead of coming up with a course on our own, basically walking down there or with somebody sent it in an email, you know, it, 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 it I, I just, this, this is the problem with flooding. 
everybody has a theory. Everybody has their own, you know, point of view, and and those point of views might be valid, but we don't know that until we've tested them. I think Mr. Galver has has his hand up again. All right, Tony. I think you never took it down. Okay. So I'll unmute yourself. Tony, do you want to talk again? You're right, buddy. Sorry. I think hiring an engineer to figure out how to alleviate the kind of the street flooding in the flats, Washington area would be a very good idea because I don't think we know what the, what, what the options are and what the most cost effective options are. So I think I, and I, I can't speak for the rest of the committee, but I will talk to them about it Tuesday. And um, I would definitely support a study like that so we could figure it out. Thank you. And, Thank you, Tony. And Thank can you. I can I say two things? Sure. Um, Washingtonville, you know, like Dan can confirm. Uh, Dan uh, Dan Sarnoff is a is just a small area on the map. It's really not the area we're talking about. It doesn't include the Avalon, and it doesn't include the industrial area. And I think we might want to think about both sides of the river and the other side of Old White Plains Road as well, not just the tiny area that's the historic Washingtonville. Washingtonville includes the Avalon. I think it includes the flats, so yeah. I'm not sure the subdivision map does. I'm just, I just want to make but sure. That's what everybody, everybody knows that's the- We're area. all talking about it. Okay, well, okay. The other question I have is about the um, New York Home, New York State Home Program for Jerry. Um, so I, I understand how this works. Um, so we would be basically providing soft costs for affordable housing developers. It would be. And maybe they okay. could leverage some of the county money for land acquisition. It could, it could but, partner that way. Right, but it would only be, the way I envisioned it, it would only be 100% affordable housing developments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the county has, has a lot of money that doesn't typically get spent and they put more in the budget this year for land acquisition. So we might be able That's to partner right. that way. Right. And, um, so that, yeah. that was a little, that was a little, that, that ended up when I was sitting, when I was um, um, at the county and um, we were doing the, uh, we had that workshop with the state legislators. That was a little, uh, there was a little contention there on uh, what they considered. Everybody was, okay with spending or contributing money to 100% affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Not many legislators were, were content on, on giving um, uh, money to developments that, that, that were not 100% affordable. Okay, and that, well, and also if you can get to 100%, you yeah. can get a lower degree of affordability. Yep. Yeah, um, right. exactly. Uh, the, other, the other thing I'd say is, we made this mistake with the regatta, it's um, 15 to 20 years. I think that's very out of date. I think that usually they want 50 or 99. So that, 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 the, that the affordability doesn't, um, what do you call it? Sunset in, in 20 yep. years. So it'd be our um, program, right? So we could, we, could, we could easily do that. Right, well, I, and the question is how much would it cost for us to supervise the program? Uh, through our, so I mean, let's I don't say, mean, yeah, I let's don't say mean, we had one development, right, or yeah. one one entity. Um, just like we continue to monitor the other units, you know that I get printouts of the other uh, affordable unit affordable complexes that that include affordable units. Mm -hmm. I get printouts to 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 uh, um, share with the building department regarding those affordable units. I mean, How many of them are in the, in the village? Just we wouldn't be we wouldn't be marketing them. We would probably do it through, you know, Rose Noonan or through the through the town of yeah. Merrick. We wouldn't be yeah, marketing yeah. them. But the question is, how much would it cost to administer the grant program versus using? An established program to do it in the village of Mamaroneck, just because does it is it another staff person? I'm just so, so once we give out the money, Laura, I didn't in, in, envision having more monitoring than we already do with the other affordable units, the other affordable uh, complexes. Okay. Okay. Victor, Victor, Victor has his hand up. 
Okay, I have a question, I think, for Nora and also for Jerry, which is when I read that email, saw that link, I had similar thoughts. Uh, this is getting us into a program that actually stayed, uh, but will require management. And also, uh, so, so while I understand that that's the type of program that we're inclined to, I would, wouldn't like this memo, or at least on my, or on my side to say, I, I wanna go just that route. I, I think just keeping this amount dedicated to that, to this goal of affordable housing is okay, but I don't wanna just to, to tie our hands to that scheme because precisely it would have, it could have some other consequences that I, I don't think we're at this, this time ready to evaluate. So I, I'm okay leaving the price, the, 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 the amount, but I, I think it's not an endorsement of exactly how to go. I think we need to study this, this further actually, because there's several pieces to it. So, so with that caveat, I, I, I will support it. But, and then the question for Nora is uh, what I think should, is there any additional clarifications that you would like to see in this memo so that we don't go, so that we go in the, in the right step-by-step -step analysis and not, and not, tire hands, which that, that was kind of my question to you. My, How can we make my, this better? My sense from having worked on some affordable housing projects and um, been involved with the development of, of the Mac board, you know, been involved 20 or more than 20 years ago with the Mac board is that you, we run the risk of getting into that kind of situation where we're a nonprofit that spends too much on administration and not as much on the mission. And we might be able to partner with somebody else who would do this better than we would, because it's not a lot of money. And, I, and so maybe we should, you know, we're, we're, we're committing to covering soft costs and we can probably get the county to cover the land costs. And that's gonna be really attractive to an affordable housing developer. Maybe we're gonna be able to find a nonprofit that does it better than that does it better that can work with us, and I'm happy to work with Jerry on that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just think we might be able to do it in the most efficient way and get the most bang for the buck. But why couldn't we so, have the town housing administrator? Yeah, so so I envisioned it where we give them the money, uh, the the people that we decide or the entity that we decide uh, has the best proposal. Uh, within the village, because that eliminates all of that state, state competition within the village of Mamaroneck and give them, give them the money based on their costs. So we could have two entities, we could have one entity, we could create one grant of, uh, of 400,000, we can create two grants of $200,000 each to, to have two entities do it. But then once the development is completed, we just pass it on to the town uh, and, their, uh, and their housing department. So I, I think it's important for the village to not have any involvement in the actual development because we 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 yes. have a, we aren't skilled at that. I think yeah. I think we all agree on that one. Yeah. Okay. So this is a way this is a way to incentivize developers mm -hmm. to give us a 100% affordable housing development. Yeah, and, and not for at least consider the village to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, with, with, with the affordable developers, you get the housing in perpetuity, not for 20 years or whatever. Well, no, well, that's, see this, yeah, I mean, but we have to make sure that that's, that, I mean, that is the, that's the standard now, that wasn't the standard 25 years ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, I would like to propose taking 150000 out of the sewer rehabilitation program and putting it into an engineering study uh, to evaluate projects in the Washingtonville area other than the Army Corps that would help alleviate flooding for our residents. You want to say on uh, Washingtonville and the flats in case there's any confusion? No, 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 it's, it's okay. Washington. Okay. Uh, you, know, uh, you shouldn't where, call the flats unless you've lived here about 80 years. And the industrial area. Uh, why are we taking out and not adding? Adding from what? Where, where are you going to get the money from? We got, we have this, a, this is the whole amount of money. It's got to come out of something. Uh, our disbursement in June of last year was nine fifty, or, or approximately nine hundred fifty thousand. So it's got to come out of something. Then we have an additional coming up. 
I'd be in support of that. And I, I think that the uh, flood committee chair was in support of that too. Uh, I would not, if I can, I, I think that the, the area needs to be, you know, wider than just saying Washingtonville. I think there are different people who have different opinions as to what that area is. That's why I specified from the Avalon over to Fenimore. Um, what, what about what about the folks who live on Howard? What about the folks who live on Lester? What about the folks who live on Hillside? We give you guts. So, can we just do a meets and bounds? How about from the Mamaroneck River? In from ninety five, the Mamaroneck River uh, to Fenimore Road. Covered from the railroad tracks north. That's, that's fun. I'm happy with that. Um, I think I would rather not take it out of um, uh, what we from the from from the uh, stormwater. Um, the mem the the, it's interesting. It, I'm talking, Tom. It's interesting that we have the memo says three hundred thousand for the affordable housing. And the captain on top says 400,000. Um, and my feeling is that we can take 100,000 or 150,000 from there, still have meaningful effort to um, affordable housing. No, I, I, I'm totally against that. Listen, this, uh, is I, I, to, I, this is a chance to really make a difference in people's lives. Uh, that sewer rehabilitation project, we could bond that and it won't cost the residents of this village a cup of coffee a year. I have, I have no interest in doing that if it's coming out of the affordable housing fund. You know, yeah. this is about really having seed money to make people's lives better. The sewer, the sewer rehabilitation, that money can, that's 150 that can be bonded of a project that we were, we were going to bond 5 million of. Now we're only gonna have to bond 150 of. That, that is like, you know, that, that, that is, not fair to the people who really need a hand because we have people in this community who are still out of their homes from the floods. We have to offer them some hope. And I understand that, Tom. Them and leaving money in the sewer rehabilitation program where that cost could be borne by everybody in this community. I, I'm not for that. that, that that's you know, hurting the people that need the most help. What then? Then how many units do you think you would get at 100% affordable housing? It, it could, it, you could get a building if it's seed money and, it, and it, it covers the soft costs. It could be what makes the building viable or unviable. That, it's not about my... one or two apartments, Dan. It, it, it's about possibly having a development. I, I'm, I know you can't see that, but, and I know you, you don't really understand the, the viability of affordable housing in this community, but this is really important. Tom, Tom, um, Tom. That's, no. that's not an appropriate thing. Yeah, to come say. on. I just not said whatever I want. If you don't like it, not respectful, fine. and come it's on. not polite. Yes. Let's move. Now let's come on. Forward. I think everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah I, we can oppose. Yeah, we oppose that language here. housing. Listen, I'm opposed to this. This is a bad move for the people in this community. The, and you can be so, Tom. Yeah. Fine. We all, we all have our independent views. Every. Uh, and I know a great deal about affordable housing. I'm very much in for it. But I'm looking at the cost. I'm looking at. The, I'm talking, Tom. I'm looking at the cost benefit. To all the residents. How many residents you can get for uh, an affordable housing uh, for that money, and how much you can do for that many more people. And I okay. think what, what I'm trying to point out, Dan, you know, it would be nice if you just let people. One hundred fifty thousand dollars out of the. It'd be nice if you just let somebody finish. I, I appreciate your views. I would have liked to finish mine. Thank you. So it the so the issue becomes it's not saying one or the other; it's trying to do both, and that's what you know. That's my proposal. Thank no, you. Dan, it, I, I take issue with your, your your characterization. It's not trying to do both. It's taking money from the housing and use and and, not, and leaving the sewer rehabilitation project, which we had always always talked about bonding. And you know you can have that smirk on your face all you want, Dan. 
But this is really important. Affordable housing changes. It's smiling at your tongue. You know, you, you have a smirk on your face, Dan. It sounds smart. Like I'm smiling. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it, it's it's a really important thing for people in this community, especially those that are still out of their homes. $150,000 bonded to this community comes to about you know, a, a quarter a house a year over the 30 years. And, you know, maybe that's important to you, but I think people in this community would rather see people in homes. So I make a motion that we take the $150,000 for the engineer study from the sewer rehabilitation program. So and, we'll, not, and, and, and I have a second. I ask, can I ask a question, which I think was part of it? Yep. The memo has two amounts. We have 400,000 for affordable housing and 300 for affordable housing. I think that was the question. Mr. Sonoff, Mr. Sonoff corrected that. I'm sorry about that. Mr. Sonoff corrected that and he was supposed to redistribute it, but I made him very busy today. The, well, what, he put on, what he put on the screen was the correct memo, the corrected memo. It's 400K. Yeah, I'm working 400. from the packet that I downloaded Friday. So yeah. that's 400,000. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion. 500,000 for sure. No, Dan, I've already made a motion. I like to seconds. amend your motion, which I can do. No, okay. it's been seconded. Oh, it's been no, seconded. It's been seconded. You can't. It's been seconded, and you can amend a motion, and, and that's what I propose. No, you can't, Deb. It's been seconded. Augie, call the roll. You have to vote Trustee on the motion. Nadez. Yes. Trustee Natchez. No. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Shapur. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Thank you. So the money for the study. The Washington bill will come out of uh, sewer rehabilitation. That'll go down to 350, and Washington bill will go up to 150. Thank you. No. We'll revise. Mayor, we'll revise the memo bill. and redistribute it. Sorry about that. It's Can not I Washington bill. It was the, the, the geographic area you described. Yeah, right. the geographic so, area from, from the Marrick River, north of the train tracks, uh, east to Fenimore Road. Um, do you think it should go a little bit further east than Fenimore Road? Where do you want to go? Well, I, I mean, I don't know if the industrial area, I mean, they're what, it, it's sort of, I think maybe that's subject for discussion. All right, well, let's ask the engineer. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, I, I think that those are the areas and not, I guess it would, be on the north side of Mamaroneck Avenue. Now, what about the south side of Mamaroneck Avenue? No, it doesn't really flood as badly over there. We, the south side of Mamaroneck Avenue brings you all the way to Boston Post Road. Yeah. Let, let, let's. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I mean the part that's county owned, like Columbus Park. We're talking about they don't own Columbus Park. No, I mean the part of Mamaroneck Avenue that's, that the south side of the of the land. The south side of Mamaroneck, of the county owned portion of Mamaroneck Avenue. So Columbus Park through where Lou lives. I'm, I live right at the park yeah, there. But no, right. if, you go, if you go from the Mamaroneck River, right? If you go from the Mamaroneck River east, you get all of that. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we're covering all of that. Yeah. I mean, that's why I said the Mamaroneck River. Yeah, that'll do it. The, the question was whether Fenimore was far enough. Yeah, that is a question. And I think that's, I think that's, we leave that up to the engineer's discretion. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's try and move on. Rental registration program. Uh, Mayor, a couple of weeks ago, I provided uh, a draft for um, village attorney and the deputy village attorney. Um, they had other priorities, so at some point they'll get their rental registration um, draft together and then give it to us. I'm not sure if they have an update. Yeah, hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have that for you. Thanks, Mr. Spolzino. Uh, when I can I ask a question about that? What? We have Chapter 126, and Chapter 126. Oh, I started to go through this and I didn't finish it all. Chapter 126 make some references to home inspections. Um, there's a phrase about um, 
public meeting space, which has which is for more than 25 people or more. I guess that could be a common room in a in an apartment building. Does 126 cover any of this? That might be that was a something we discussed about a month ago and we didn't follow up on it. But could well, actually, we I wrote I sent a memo to Bob with the actual language asking for you know a reaction to that. Yeah, I you know my preliminary look is that it covers some but not all. Okay. So it's going to be a, a if what you want is the proposal that Jerry has made, there's going to be some craftsmanship putting it into chapter 126, but that's what we do. Okay. As, as much fun as the tree law? No, nothing um, will ever be as much fun nothing. as the tree law, Nora. That's, that's, that's famous. That's famous, that law. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Zoning strategies to encourage and support more affordable. Do we have anything on that, Jerry? Uh, Mayor, at the board's um, suggestion, we did get a proposal from um, um, Hardesty and Hanover, which is the new um, the new entity that Mr. Neil Desai works for, and that's included. I believe that's included in the packet. If I flip through and find it, but it's only a proposal for. Uh, it doesn't have any details. It just has a has a fee, and yeah. uh, so I. We know we know Neil, and he gave us some very good help with our comp unfinished comp plan. Unfortunately, yeah, we should be talking about that before moving into many other things. But anyway, uh, so I, I I I think it should be discussed further to to consider what the scope is. Otherwise, we'll be running in circles here and and without a specific scope. Uh, I don't I don't see where we're heading. So let's have a full proposal in front of us. So, okay. so I, I let's, agree we let's should delay that. I, I agree we should delay it and come up with a scope, but I think we should come up with a scope. Yeah. You know, we should tell them what we're looking for here. I Can I, I just... I'm sorry, go ahead. Nora, Nora was talking. Go ahead, Nora. We, so Neil and Sarah Brown from Hardesty and Hanover are on the call. Um, I really, I'm with Victor. We haven't completed our comp plan, and the comp plan should be what um, guides our proposal for this. And um, so I think I'm really interested in working with Neil to complete our comp plan. I mean, that's, 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 that's woefully late. Okay, we, um, we could do both. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when we complete the comp plan, we're gonna have a sustainability chapter. That's when we can work out the parameters of what, of how we want to change things for affordable housing. And that would, I think that would kind of back us into a scope of what our next steps are. Or it might actually accomplish the same thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure Neil would like us to finish the comp plan. I, I, right, Neil, could you come on for a second? I wanna ask you a question. Well, you can you give us say the floor. He's on, he's on, Mayor. Hi, Neil, how are you? Good, hello everybody. Hello, Neil. Neil, could, could we work in simultaneous tracks, both on the comp plan and on this? Um, it, that's a possibility, surely. I think, um, uh, you know, the, I hadn't known what the, what, what the board is interested in doing with the comp plan. So th that's good to know that you want to move that ahead. And uh, there's also Sarah Brown, if, you, if you're able to bring her on at the same time, if not, that's fine, but. Um, uh, I'm here, think, Neil. Oh, hey, Sarah, hey, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, so I think uh, originally just in talking with uh, Dan and Jerry, uh, it was about affordable housing zoning overlay. And, you know, I know that, you know, the comprehensive plan got initially uh, put on hold because of the moratorium study. And there were a lot of, you know, decisions made about the, the C1 and C2 zone of the corridors and the Maranac and rezoning adopted. So the question is, um, I guess a question and it's for myself and for everybody is um, if you want to move it, I, I believe it, the public engagement from the comprehensive plan is, you know, two or three years old, uh, not saying that things haven't changed, maybe the priorities have shifted a little bit. I would say that that's something we need to rethink uh, how to, how to, uh, uh, how to kind of re reconnect with people. Um, we do, we do have a final, the third final draft of the comprehensive plan. We went very far with it. 
Um, is there is there a way to uh, appropriately just kind of fix it up, or do we have to do a lot of updating uh, of the of that draft? And then the second thing is whether, uh, like the moratorium moratorium study, you went ahead and made you know, did the study and did some you know major zoning changes. Uh, as far as the if if the specific idea of an affordable housing overlay um, is something you want to uh, create and apply, uh, is that something that needs to uh, you know be put on hold in order for the comprehensive plan to be done? Can they boot, do? Can they be done in a simultaneous track? And this is something I can kind of also ask you know talk with Sarah about as well. Um, so that those are some things that come to mind. Okay. I mean, I, I would think just what you're saying is maybe we should continue to comprehensive plan uh, and include the idea for a, an affordable housing overlay simultaneously. How, That's I mean, one possibility. Uh, how, how far are we along in the comprehensive plan? I mean, just you know, you, you could put a percentage on it. We had three, we had, we were, uh, I'd say we had three final drafts that we produced. So there were three, the third iteration was completed after the BOT gave us changes and we completed a draft. So we, we just about completed it. And then the next step was to have the review process happen, just the last review and, and, and public hearing. So we got very far. So I'm just saying, you know, you, you, you could do, you could tie that up if that's possible, looking back at thing, looking back at the document, if that's possible to tie it up uh, or, you know, you could, you could, uh, choose to move ahead if, if you think it's, if there's appropriate basis in the, in the existing comp plan, which, which from 2012 to move ahead with the affordable housing overlay, that's, that's another path you could take, uh, is to move, move that ahead. Um, trustee, uh, uh, Neil, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because precisely one of the issues we included. Uh, as we were making probably the second or third iteration was this issue of affordable housing. Yeah. yeah. And after that, we've, we've gone a little fur, you know, further on, but at this point, if we just, in a way, wrap that up or improve prove it without going into details of, 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 of how the zoning change would be, because actually the comp plan supports any zoning changes in the future, we right. could probably fill that in. But actually the question I think should go flip back to you as you experience with us are the good and bad things of this process, how could we really finish it off? Because opening this up, uh, we should really come up with a plan and a timeline that, that includes this uh, affordable housing piece, but get us to the finish line in a couple of, in a few months, it could be doable. Of course, it has to have some uh, meaningful public participation, but how, then what would be the answer to accomplish all that? Maybe you don't have it all now, but probably you can come back and tell us. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, our, 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 I guess I would call more, our proposal really was, it was a proposal, it was just, this is what our, this is what the, what we thought, what, we, what the initial assignment given to us, which was to go for the specific idea of a zoning overlay and to provide a rates. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we can go back and uh, Sarah and I, Think about how can we, uh, what's the kind of an efficient and, and appropriate way to tie up to tie up as in you know finish up the comprehensive plan and move ahead with um, this idea for a affordable housing zoning overlay. Uh, I can we I think that that could be something that Sarah and I put our heads together to uh, come up with a process for that proposed timeline. Uh, so more of a proper proposal. Why don't you give us a proposal for that and we can evaluate that for our next meeting. And, and, and before he does, Mayor, if I could, before he does that, because that's exactly what we talked about, there are other strategies that have been mentioned or recommended to us, like accessory dwellings, like, um, um, you know, parking requirement strategies, um, private public partnerships, those kinds of things. I don't know if the board is interested in pursuing that or not. I thought the overlay would have been the easiest and the best um, um, overall big picture to be able to show the board of trustees, you know, what can go or what can happen where um, as the as the uh, as the board pursues, you know, the uh, affordable housing uh, components that they want to or strategies that they want to achieve. 
So I don't know about the rest of the board, but uh, you know, for accessory dwelling units, in my mind, it, 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 they're only meaningful to me if they're actual affordable. You know, yeah. Uh, I, you I, said I that. I don't like the idea of, oh well, they'll probably be affordable. They're small units. You know, because I, I don't see that's the way that they're going to evolve. I think they're going to evolve into just market rate apartments and market yeah. rates apartments around here are incredibly expensive. I, I was I was looking for somebody recently and uh, a decent uh, one bedroom is uh, you know well over two thousand dollars. Yeah. That um, the same would go for duplexes and triplexes as well. They would I, all I go would, into I, the market. Sorry, Jay, I just want to see if, if Sarah, uh, if we could, we can certainly put our heads together after we talked. Is did anything? Do you? I mean, based on your experience, do you have any 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 thoughts right now, or or uh, can we uh, come back with them on the proposal? No, I think that's something that we can definitely come back with. But since you are so close to the finish line with your comp plan, I think we can do this hand in hand and wrap that up for you and make sure that it has. The instruments that we need in it to then further your affordable housing law that you look at whatever form that that may take Good. but i think it's an important issue that you're looking at and i think it's something that we can definitely do and wrap this up and i'd like not to forget the new york state or the westchester county model law i mean i think i'd like you know that that's something that we talked about and we've only implemented <laughs> modestly one and yeah, yeah, I think again we 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 already had this conversation and it got into paper, so mm -hmm. I think let's 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 right. follow from there, maybe clean it up, uh, and and see. But before anything, let's see the proposal. Really, we're getting to the to the finish line, so hopefully, Sarah and Neil can give us a very yeah. focused finish line approach. Okay, great. So at least you, you have some. Uh some uh, guidance there, Neil. Thank you, Neil, for showing up tonight. Thanks, Sarah. My pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. As a, as a matter of uh, housekeeping on this, um, Jerry, do we have any problem uh, in contractual arrangements with NV5 that uh, uh, in switching for, on the comp? Uh, I don't know. I have to look. Not that I'm aware of, but I will make sure that Mark uh, G and I uh, take a look at that and make yeah, sure. I just, I just don't want to get into a catch-22 yeah. engines. Uh, that's a good point. Am I, am I still on? That's a good point, uh, Trustee Natchez. I think before I left, um, uh, I uh, this is just coming from, from me, I had spoken with NV5 because NV5's planning staff has basically left the New York City office, so there's nobody left in the office to do that. So uh, before I left, I was still on NV5 part-time for, for a while until uh, just before December, where I started at Hardesty Hanover, December 2021. And I did send over, uh, uh, I did get, uh, send over the final invoice for the comprehensive plan. Uh, essentially, NV5 had completed its scope of work, you know, having produced the final draft, except for obviously the, 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 pu the public hearing planning board, the last little bit. Uh, and so uh, in the interest of closing out NV5's role and making a clean transition to wherever I would be, uh, which now is Howard C. Hanover, um, the, a, a, a final invoice was submitted from NV5. So that's at least the status from the kind of mechanics from the administrative perspective from NV5 side. Um, but I, I obviously, I encourage you to follow up with NV5 too, because to confirm that this is just, uh, but that's, that's, that's how I dealt with it because I wanted to be a clean a clean yeah, break, we so yeah, and, and we and we own the work product. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, we have an executive session, so let, let's go through the stuff that's on for the regular meeting. Uh, item two L. No, I'm sorry. Item one L is Zen City uh, connecting local residents to local governments. Uh, this is on One for question, what, why is this on for regular meeting if it has not cleared the work session? That, that's that's not the way we Well, we, we dealt work. with it we, well, because we dealt with it at the last meeting and you, the board needed more information. Right, uh, but 
It's yeah, not. It's not our procedures. Yeah, Nora procedure. brought that up. Nora brought that up at the beginning in a meeting when you weren't there yet. Yeah, it's not uh, our procedures. It's not good. Yeah. Well, we, 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 it's here. We, we're not going to do it in the future. We talked about it. You would. You would have heard it. Uh, but we'll, we'll remove it when we get to the regular session, then, if needed. No, but Victor, we won't remove. We'll talk about it and we'll decide what we're going to do. Does the board have a desire to deal with this at the, 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 the regular meeting? Uh, if, do you have any questions for the staff? No, I, I think I would say no. You, you, you I have, have no I have, questions? I, yeah, let me just I have many that. questions, have... Uh, but with what I have in front of me, I say no. Okay, you say no. All right, fine. Uh, I can tell you. I, I'm also. I, I don't see the benefit in this. I, I um, I understand. I we haven't heard from the lawyers about whether we're creating more documents that are that are public documents. But from my perspective. There's a small amount of people that participate in meetings. There's a, there's a, another percentage of people that participate in um, social media. There are a lot of people who watch social media but don't make comments. I don't think this is this captures everybody but the, the 10 people who appear at public meetings. And um, I, I, I just, I, I, the report that they sent, I mean, I know it wasn't our community, but it seemed to be um not that beneficial and not a great use of resources and i really you know I, I know that everybody says we're flush with cash but that doesn't mean we should be spendthrifts and i just don't see this as a really good use of our resources okay i, I just want to point out there was something that happened on social media uh this week that nora you you actually became involved with uh there was a resident uh who contacted me uh about uh programs uh for younger children children under five mm -hmm. and uh i put her in touch with uh the rec department and uh you know which put her in touch with jason pinto and it all came from her tagging me on social media uh i know majority of the board does not participate in an active way on social media uh, I, I really don't know, you know, a better tool to put your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the community. Yeah, obviously not everybody is on it, but but there is, a, I would say, at least a plurality of people who are on one form of social media or another, uh, and you, you can get a gauge on what is important to those folks uh, about how they're thinking, about how they're feeling, uh, and I, I think it's it's a useful tool. Uh, that allows you to be a better elected official and allows our staff uh, to offer better programs to the community. But that's just my opinion. Lou? Uh, well, I agree totally because um, that's the only way to correct uh, misinformation and, uh, and rumors. And from knocking on doors and talking to people, I can tell you there's a lot of that. And, uh, and we, haven't, we haven't communicated well in the past and uh, we need to start doing better. So if not this, then what? Because what we do doesn't work. That's my question. You know, I think it, it's you're getting you're you know you're getting a small percentage of people who are vocal on social media. The the the, the point that Tom made is somebody who had already been to the a Park and Rex Commission meeting and had been in touch. So. Um, she figured out she'd figured out what to do and she'd been in touch. So I think that it's it, it, and sometimes it can be an echo chamber. It's a small percentage of people who are making comments on social media. This isn't getting to the entire population of 20,000. And it's again, it's 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 the squeaky wheel. There's there's enough information on social media. There's enough people who follow social media well enough to understand what the trends are. I don't see why we're paying someone to cull through comments on social media, which may or may not really be from residents in the village of Mamaroneck. So why, that, not do a, why not do a test, uh, a three month test, like uh, we did with the other thing? 
see how it works. And then when we and then when we get the report, we just release it to the public. I mean, I I just don't I I don't you know I think the the police chief has come up with something that's really going to fulfill a goal of the PRRC and make us compliant with getting public input for the police to, to help the police um, police even better than they do. Um, I just don't see this as something that's that we're, we just don't agree. That's that's my opinion. I don't see it as a good use of resources. All right, let, let's just get this done. Trustee Natchez, what do you want? Um, I happen to agree with uh, Victor and Nora on this one. I, I think that uh, it's an interesting avenue, but I don't see the benefits uh, uh, of really getting a real input from the uh, entire community. I, I, I see we're not going for it, but I, I will tell you folks that this is like 10 years behind the times. Uh, all businesses, most governments uh, are, are, are using some sort of mining of, so, of social media to inform their decisions. Uh, and it, I, I think it's a shame, you know, I'm on Facebook, but there's so many other social medias that I do not participate in uh, that, you know, a, a lot of, especially the people in this community who were under 50 uh, participate in and uh, use constantly. And I, I think that, yes, it doesn't include everybody, but what does include everybody? There's nothing that includes everybody. Right now, we have a small group of people, and we have a very vocal small group of people. I would like to enlarge that to include more people, but I'm not going to, you know, beat, beat a dead horse here. You don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. Do it next year. Uh, paving for parking, police chief we did. Okay, where's just a joint waterworks joint capital program? Revoir Lane Water Main. There was a, a broken transite pipe. Uh, for those who don't know, a transite pipe is an asbestos pipe. Uh, when you have a break in an asbestos pipe, the Department of Health requires us to remove the whole length of the pipe and not just fix the break as you would with a, an, an iron pipe. Uh, this break is in rye. It's in rye, the area of rye that is serviced by the Westchester Joint Waterworks says there's a portion of rye that is serviced by the Westchester Joint Waterworks. So this is a joint project paid for by all three communities. But we are the only community besides rye whose residents are affected. Uh, we, have, we have about, I don't know, 10 houses who are affected by this and they are now on temporary water. Uh, rye has a lot more obviously. So what this is doing is just accepting this as a joint project. So it, it's paid for by all three communities via the rate payers in Rye. Does everybody understand it? Yes. Everybody fine with that? Um, I just want to make sure that the all associated costs with doing this, the bond, the bond council attorneys, what anything that's involved in doing this is put is captured in this mm -hmm. and paid for by the, you know them. Okay. Uh, and it, you know, I read I read the memo back from uh, Burstall, and it wasn't as clear as I would have liked it uh, to say that all the costs are are included. Uh, so that's on for a regular meeting. And can I just make a pitch? We talked about this before the pandemic, but but obviously, you know, everybody's plate was over full that um, these repairs are super duper expensive and we know we're going to have to do them. So it might be great if we could do them in a systematic way, at, not as emergency repairs, but as repairs ahead of time. Well, the the... the... Department of Health and Westchester Joint Waterworks have come to a deal that they would do them as soon as they break and not because the Department of Health could require us to do them all at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was kind of the deal that they made. So you could you could schedule to do one and then have two more break and you'd still have to do this emergency repair. Yeah, yeah uh, but it's, at some point we would get ahead of it. So, it, and it probably but, in the but, long run is less expensive to do them proactively. Now, of course, you can't predict which is the one that's gonna break. 
Exactly, that's my point. Five, right, but I'm just saying, it's we talked about it more than two years ago and maybe it's time to revisit. Thank you. Uh, the next up is Poet Laureate for the Village of Manor. Uh, the Arts Council is recommending a man named Michael Collins. Yes. Uh, to be the Poet Laureate of our community. He's actually written uh, poetry based upon his experiences of going to Harbor Island Park, which I found very uh, interesting when I was looking at it, his, his writings online. Uh, does anybody have any problems with doing this? Not, not me. Okay, and the last up was retention of firm for village search. Uh, I notice a majority of the board wants to do this. Uh, I'll talk about it during a regular meeting. I, I, I'm obviously opposed to it, uh, but I, I'm assuming we have three members who want to do it. Okay. Okay, so that's on for a regular meeting. Okay, uh, let's get to our packet for... What happened to IJ and K on uh, all business? We're going to get to them next week. Next week? Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. 28. Six weeks. March 28th. We'll get some. They're going to be up next first. Uh, make sure I, J, and K are first. All right. In order. Uh, I am making a motion. And the motion is boards and committee appointments. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered into executive session pursuant to 105 1F of New York State Public Officers Law. Uh, and it's, it's appointing folks to the Board of Traffic Commissioners, uh, Parks and Recreation Committee, and the Tree Committee. We're just going to talk about them and then appoint, we're going to talk about it, right? And then we'll appoint them into regular meeting. Uh, the next up is uh, Village Manager EEOC complaint against the Board of Trustees. And it's anticipated that a motion will be offered to go into executive session uh, pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Office Law. And the next up is, is a litigation, the Village of Mamaric uh, versus Siad. Uh, I don't have, is that 105.1D too? Well, okay, we're going to, that, that's a litigation that we're going to discuss in executive session. So I make those motions. Can I please have a second of those motions? Second. Uh, I plan to attend on B uh, by, by advice of council. Mr. Natchez, I'm going to try and state this clearly. Our council, both the village attorney and the attorney who is representing the village in this matter, has strongly suggested that it would not be proper or would not be in the best interest of the village for you to attend. I have no information from your council. We have nothing in writing from your council. There was no, as far as I know, there was no conferment with your council and with our council. And I believe if you attend, you are putting this community in danger and I will not participate in that discussion. The attorney that it represents me has been in touch with uh, uh, um, Mike. Uh, he has not answered them. Okay, uh, so we, we, we don't have any feedback on that. Um, you have been advised by the people who represent this community that that would not be a good way to move forward for this community. I am asking you to look out for the best interest of this community by recusing yourself. This is an important decision you're about to make right now. And it's putting the community before yourself. I'm putting the community before myself and I have talked with our council and my council has talked, it's communicated uh, with Frankel. Uh, Frankel has not answered him. As on the, uh, on the understanding was as I understand it from him and his discussions with Frankel, that uh, yeah. I would participate. There wasn't a discussion with Frankel. You just said that. It's either yes I or said no. That, I said the second time, the, the second email that was sent. The first one was a discussion. There, there's been nothing materially changed since the last time Frankel told you it was not a good idea, and our village attorney both told you it was not a good idea. All right. 
I'm going to take these votes separately. Borgie, the vote on 1A. Trustee Young. Oh, wait, wait, what are we voting on now? We're voting on the board. boards and commissions. Boards and commissions. All right. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Hey, yes, yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. The next item 1B, village manager EEOC complaint against the Board of Trustees. Call the roll. This, this is a vote for whether we, we, we meet with the attorney to discuss the EEOC complaint, at which Trustee Natchez has now told us. I will not, I will not attend. Okay, then let's do the vote. Let's okay, do the okay, vote. Okay, Call the roll. Wait a minute, I'll clarify something. We will decide that I'll hear from a council when we get there. So don't I don't want to get into this catch 22 that we entered and we I'll I'm, I, I will hear from both. I will hear correct, but I'm clarifying my vote early on or having discussion. I'm sorry. I mean, I told the before vote before you call term. before you call the vote, sir, which I have a right to do. That's no, what I'm saying. No, this is part of this is part of the discussion. I was just, you didn't give a chance. So I'm saying, I'm clarifying that I will immediately will hear from council as soon as we get in there as, because we have to, we do have to hear from council on, on this matter. It's a very important matter for the village as you just said. All right, so you can call the roll if you want. Trustee Young? No. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes, I wanna hear from council. Trustee Tavor? Yes, I want to hear from council. Mayor Murphy? Well, let me point out, we have heard from council before. There is nothing that has been materially changed. You know, th this is a, 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 a semantic dodge. I vote no. Okay. Now, BOM versus uh, Mr. Sied. Call the roll. Trustee is young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The board? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, let's go to executive session. Okay. Hey, um, Augie, let's well, think crap out of it. Hold on.
Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Are we here? Good evening, and uh, welcome to the village of Mimaric. Well, let's fix the sound. My mic, my mic is mute. Mute the sound. Testing, testing. Okay, good. Good evening, and uh, welcome to the village of Mimaric Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to do some housekeeping. Uh, we came out of an executive session. In that executive session, uh, the village of Mamaric uh, voted to settle a lawsuit uh, in the amount of $250,000. Uh, village of Mamaric versus Siad, we, we, that's $250,000 to us. Uh, we accepted that settlement. It was a unanimous vote. Uh, there was an item on the agenda about an EEOC complaint that we could not discuss because Trustee Natchez uh, would not leave, uh, but we will hopefully get to that another time. Uh, so I need a motion uh, ending that executive session. So moved. Second, or we call roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? You have to do it audibly, not raise your hand. You have to say it. Aye. And, aye. I, and I vote aye. Uh, now I need a motion uh, closing the work session. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Village of Mimaric Board of Trustees regular meeting uh, for March 14th. 2022. Uh, please join me to the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. 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 Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, of the United United States 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 of America, States of America, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And first is the adoption of the agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. What? Oh, I, I make a, I'm sorry. I make a motion to open the meeting. All right, so moved. Second. All in favor of opening the meeting. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, adoption of the agenda. So moved. I need a second. Second. All the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, the first item is communication to the board. Okay. I see two hands up. Glenn. And Robert, let's go to Robert because Glenn is a frequent, frequent caller. 
Robert, unmute yourself if your hand is up. Robert. Am I unmuted? Yeah. This will be short. I'd like to make a nonpartisan statement to the mayor and all the trustees. Please attend to the people's business and refrain from making negative comments about your fellow tr trustees just because they may disagree with you. This does not reflect well on the friendly village. My statement, thank you. What's up, Glenn? Good evening, everyone. We have some uh, good news. The, the uh, yesterday fell below 1,000 for New York. So we continue to move in the right direction. And hopefully uh, by summer, we can be back to full uh, activities all over the village. Um, I continue to hear reference to we're awash with money. We have money all up. We are not awash with money. We are going to be tight with cash. Uh, I don't think the projections that we're going to be up here are correct. I look at the uh, reports that come out every two weeks and understand we have a lot of FEMA expenses along with debt, we may have to go into the fund for a million or two dollars to cover the FEMA debt if we don't get paid any FEMA money before June 1st. There's one item that's throwing off uh, the number slightly is we did receive $1.6 million from CHIPS, but this money is a cash through. It's used for capital paving projects it will never be part of our operating budget. There can't, therefore, that money can't be treated as such. So, just just be aware. Again, you you have another program that you're you're going to add today with with the um, with the police passes. Um, you're about to get hit with um, a a bunch of sororities. You already had one before you. You got two more coming at you from Rhineck. You got one already approved from the village of Mamaronek, uh, town of Mamaronek for $19,000. And they got another 22 going through the court system right now. And these are all commercial sororities. Most of them are probably going to be solved before the end of this year. So just be a little bit careful when uh, you're stating with money. Don't worry about it. See how, see how the numbers come out. The numbers that I would like to see is uh, is our projected state aid uh, still what it is, or is it going up? It, I believe we're at $119,000. How much have we put in to recover for FEMA for the pandemic in 2020? How much money have we requested for reimbursement for the storm of August 2020, how much money have we requested from uh, for the pandemic for 2021? And how much money have we requested from FEMA for um, Ida slash Andre for 2021? And is the money that we request for FEMA is FEMA's uh, reimbursement back to us 80% and do we have any news yet whether the state is going to reimburse us any other funds? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda is presentations. And the first presentation is from the St. Patrick's, uh, Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee. Uh, we are back in full swing this year. Uh, they'll be marching on Sunday, I encourage everyone to come out and support the parade. Uh, it, it is not just a good day for the Irish, it's a good day for the whole community. Uh, so I will turn it over. Uh, Mr. Murphy, are you going to uh, lead this and uh, introduce your members tonight? Or is that how we're doing it? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to turn it over to Matt Sullivan, the official uh, Masters of Ceremonies for the South Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade. Matt, take it away. Thank you. I just want to point out, while Mr. Murphy is a friend, we are not related. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Michael. Uh, on behalf of the South Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee, thank you all for this opportunity to address the Board of Trustees as well as the citizens of our great Larchmont Mamaroneck community via LMC Media, our community's premier media center. Uh, I'm Matt Sullivan, executive director of LMC Media. And I also happen to have the proud distinction of being the official parade master of ceremonies for this year. Uh, I'll be announcing the parade live from the official Grand Marshal viewing stand on Mamaroneck Avenue. And uh, it is my absolute honor to present to you the co-Grand Marshals of our 2022 parade, Ms. Kate Bialo, hailing from County Larchmont, and Dr. Joe Durney, hailing from County Porchester. Yep. Kate? Wonderful. First of all, Matt, as excited as you are to be the MC of the parade, we are even more excited. And I also want to make sure that everybody knows that you have a brand new baby boy named Asher, who was born a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations to you. I've seen pictures. He's absolutely adorable. Fortunately, he wow. doesn't look like his father. So that's a good thing. He obviously that's takes after his mother. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yes, I'm absolutely thrilled to be a co-marshal of the 2022 Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade. And you might wonder why we have co-marshals. This is not something that has been part of our tradition in the past, but I was originally supposed to be the Grand Marshal in 2020 but COVID had other ideas about that. And my wonderful co-marshal Joe Journey was supposed to be the, the Grand Marshal in 2021, but COVID still had other ideas about that. So we are absolutely thrilled in 2022, March 2022, to be marching together arm in arm as co-Grand Marshals of the 2022 Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade. We are also extremely grateful to the Village of Americ for giving us the uh, permission and the blessing to, to have our parade down the Maranek Avenue, which is the best place to have the St. Patrick's Day Parade this side of Dublin. Um, we also want to thank the Village of Maranek Fire Department, Police Department, and of course the Department of Public Works and Department of Parks and Recreation, all of whom um, will have a big role in helping this parade to be the best parade we've had in our 12 years of existence. So thank you so much. And now over to my co-grand marshal, Joe Durney. Thank you, Kate. Um, my name is Joe Durney, and I was chosen as the 2021 grand marshal. Uh, although the Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade is honored to march down Mamaroneck Avenue, it's truly a Sound Shore Parade representing the entire Sound Shore community from Port Chester, my hometown, to the Pelhams in celebration of Irish heritage and the American immigrant experience. So we thank you and invite you and the Board of Trustees, the good citizens of Larchmont and Maranac community and the entire Sound Shore community to march with us on Sunday, March 20th. Uh, we look forward to having you and uh, wanna thank you very much. Just to remind our viewers, what time does the parade kick off? Steps off at 1.30. So uh, the marchers begin lining up at 12.30. They're gonna line up across from Maranac Avenue School march straight down Maranek Avenue and uh, right into Harbor Island Park. And for those of us who uh, can't attend physically, or if you're in Ireland and you'd like to watch, you can of course tune in. LMCmedia.org will be doing a live stream of the parade. And we wanna thank our sponsors, Orange Bank and Trust. And we look thank forward you. to seeing all of you and marching or cheering on our marchers uh, as we celebrate Irish heritage and of course the American immigrant experience. So on behalf of the parade committee and LMC Media, thank you very much. It'll be the best one yet. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you all very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It, it, it warms me heart. And Kate, uh, thank you for being gracious and waiting these two years and for sharing the honor with Mr. Durney. It'll be worth the wait, believe me. Okay, great. We'll have a doubly good parade. All right. Thank Come you so here. much. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Bye. Good night. And the next up is our friends uh, from O'Connor Davies, uh, the village of Mamaroneck Quarters. Uh, and who's giving the presentation tonight, Mr. Poland? Yes, sir. Good How evening. You, sir? Good I evening. am good. 
Uh, I like to say that, you know, now that baseball is back, I am pinch hitting for Chris Cobb tonight uh, on this presentation. Uh, he is, he is uh, up in Albany at, a, at, a, at another meeting. Um, I'm here tonight also with Gary Miller, who was our supervisor uh, actually during the audit. So we're both going to kind of take you through the, uh, the presentation that we have. Uh, Gary is controlling uh, the screen. So uh, we're just going to summarize what happened in the, uh, the village for the year ended uh, May 21 uh, from a financial perspective. So next slide, Gary. So what we're gonna to cover tonight in these uh, brief number of slides, I know you have a lot on the agenda. We're gonna talk about some of the required communications as auditors that we have to provide to all our clients. And then we're really gonna take a look at your, your numbers uh, of what happened during the year ended May 21. So we're gonna look at your revenues and expenditures uh, compared to uh, what had been budgeted uh, for your general fund, which is obviously your primary operating fund. Uh, then we're going to dive down, look at your uh, major revenues uh, in that fund. We're going to even give you a five-year history of some of those bigger uh, revenue items so you could see uh, trends as to what is going on with your revenues. Then we're going to do the same thing on the expenditure side, uh, both the current year and what's gone on the last five years. And then most importantly, we're going to take a look at your fund balance for the general fund, your, your savings account. And we're going to look, uh, at, look, take a look at that uh, retrospectively as well. Uh, you do operate a couple other funds, and we will briefly touch on the fund balances in those funds. And then uh, you also have to present in your financial statement something called the statement of net position, or uh, what we call a government-wide financial statement. It kind of converts what you have to do on the fund level and makes you look as if you were a, a real business that, that did accounting uh, the way the real world uh, has to account for its uh, finances. And we'll take a look at that as well. So we start off on the next slide with uh, what your responsibilities are as those charged with governance for uh, the village. Uh, you are required and you know through your, your finance uh, folks uh, to select and implement appropriate accounting policies, uh, to make sure that you are fairly presenting your financial statements in accordance with what's called US GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, uh, in order to generate those numbers, uh, to make sure that they are fairly presenting what happened in the village, you have to have proper internal controls over your financial reporting system. If, if the processes and procedures are, are not really strong and not really good, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You won't get, uh, you know, fairly presented financial statements. Obviously, as a village in the state of New York, there are numerous uh, laws, regulations, and, and things that, that you must follow, uh, especially when it comes to any federal dollars that have been uh, flowing in, especially during the pandemic times, uh, you know, to make sure that you are in compliance with all those requirements. Uh, for us to issue uh, the opinions that we issue on your financials, uh, we are required to get from you any financial records you know, that we believe are, are appropriate uh, you know, for us to review as, as part of the audit. And of course, as, as the Board of Trustees, uh, you know, we, we talk about this in, in uh, the commercial world as well, that you have to set the proper tone at the top that flows down uh, the rest of the way through the village to make sure all this information is presented properly. Now, our responsibilities on the next slide uh, are basically the deliverables that we are provided to you and that we are discussing here tonight. So the most important thing is the audit report that we uh, generate for you. So even though uh, the report is yours and, and we assist in its preparation, the only part of that report that belongs to us is at the very beginning of it. And that's uh, the independent auditor's report or the auditor's opinion. I'm uh, proud to say that uh, we've issued what's known as an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on uh, the financial statements of the village. That's the highest form of assurance that an auditor can provide any client. Uh, it basically says that we believe that the financials uh, statements that we're about to discuss the numbers uh, on uh, fairly present what happened uh, in, the, in the village this year. Uh, we would have also provided you with what we call like a management letter and other required communications that we must provide to all uh, boards. 
Uh, we would also be required to communicate with you if we came across during the audit any fraud or illegal acts. Happy to report that we did not uh, come across that as part of uh, this annual audit. Uh, we had no difficulties in, in doing the audit. All the, uh, the finance folks uh, cooperated with us, gave us all the information uh, that we needed to, to, to get to this point. Uh, any adjustments that we found have been booked. There's nothing that we call an uncorrected misstatement that you know, we just left. Uh, you know, uh, the village booked any adjustments that, that we provided to them. And during the audit, we did not have any disagreements uh, with management. So with that, we're now gonna go into uh, you know, a high level view of the numbers and then Gary uh, will take you through uh, some of the details. So this is your uh, general fund. As I mentioned earlier, it's your primary operating fund. And again, this is at a very high level. Uh, your first column here is the original budget. This is uh, what the, the board approved to, uh, to start the, tw uh, the 2021 uh, fiscal year, you estimated all revenue sources for this fund to come in at about 36.5 million. You estimated expenditures uh, to be 37.8 million. So there was going to be a shortfall there. There's some something called other financing sources, which are generally like transfers from other funds. So what you see in the first column is you actually anticipated a decline in fund balance of $1.2 million. And you balance that by utilizing previously accumulated fund balance from previous years. Some of that was money that was given back to taxpayers in the form of a lower tax levy when you appropriate fund balance. Some of it are encumbrances uh, that carried over from the previous year. But when you get to the bottom of that column, you, you come to zero. You have a balanced budget as required uh, by New York State law. The final budget uh, was during the year, certain amendments are made to the budget, certain changes are made as, as the year goes along. And so uh, all these changes have to be approved by the board. None of this can't just be done by the finance uh, folks. The, the, these were all board approved changes. So revenues were modified up slightly, uh, very minimally. Uh, expenses uh, did uh, change and Gary's gonna go through what, what some of the, uh, the changes were. And so overall in this column, you see now an expected use of fund balance that grew to be over $3 million, about 3.1 million from the original 1.2. So the revised plan had your fund balance going down about $3.1 million. However, when you look in the third column, this is what actually happened. And Gary will, will uh, take a deeper dive into these numbers, but you could see that your revenues came in at 37.9 million or about 1.2 million better than that final budget. Your expenses only came in at 36.6 million or about 3.4 million less than your budget. And so overall, when you get towards the bottom, the third number up in the actual column, you see a positive 1,778. That means you added 1,778 to your fund balance. So compared to the expectation in the budget, that you would potentially reduce your fund balance by 3.1 million. That's why you see the variance in the last column as being a positive 4.8 million. You did 4.8 million better than your, your budget plan. Uh, so overall that 1.7 million of fund balance that got added this year with revenues exceeding expenses, you started the year with a fund balance of $15.3 million. And so you've ended the year, as you can see, with fund balance of 17.1 uh, million. So uh, on the next couple of slides, Barry will take you through some of the details of Mr. these numbers. Mr. Olin, before you yes, begin that, uh, can, can I just clarify that this is for the year that ended uh, May 31st, 2021. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, just for the folks playing along with the home version. Yes, we, as auditors, we're, we're always like a year behind. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, we're not, we're not talking about what's going on right now in your okay. current uh, fiscal year. Got, thank so you, Gary. You're welcome. So Gary will now take you through uh, some of the major uh, revenue areas in the, in the general fund. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So this dives, as we mentioned, a little bit deeper into some of the uh, major revenue categories. Um, 
compared to budget. Um, first item to just note, though, is that, you know, this fiscal year really began right at the beginning of the pandemic. And we can see in, you know, in the budgeting that it appears that um, the village was relatively conservative. You know, for example, the non-property tax distribution, that's your sales taxes. You can see that you uh, that you actually budgeted a little less for this year than you had received in the in the previous year, obviously, with a lot of unknowns uh, with COVID. Um, you know, there was a conservative approach to it. Um, going to go through four of the uh, major uh, variances. The first is, and the largest, again, is that non-property tax revenue, which, as you can see, is a $1.3 million positive variance. That really represents the, the net impact. Everything else kind of nets out. So, um, you know, you collected $4.5 million in sales taxes. Um, this is something that we've seen throughout, uh, you know, local governments in the, in the uh, lower Hudson Valley. Um, you know, we really had a strong rebound in sales, particularly there was a lot of internet sales. Um, and uh, if I believe for the last quarter of the, this year, just, to give you a rough idea, the uh, growth rate was still 12% in sales taxes overall for the lower Hudson Valley. So those rates have declined a little bit, but the growth has still been good. Um, one other quick point on that is to keep in mind that that prior year number of 3.7 million did not include the 1% increase in Westchester County for a few of the months. So it's not a pure apples to apples, the 4.5 versus the 3.7. There were two months in that prior year where the sales tax rate was a little bit lower. So there was you know, a little bit of an impact to that. Um, next up, you'll see again, a couple of items we included here primarily because they have had a lot of fluctuations given the, the COVID situation. You can see your day camp fees were, were quite, uh, were, are not that much. But um, what we wanted to point out there was that normally this runs about $300,000 a year. So um, again, you budgeted very conservatively there. It wound up coming in even a little lower, but, but on average, those numbers have been much higher. That's because we couldn't, we couldn't have as many kids because of COVID. Right, right. Um, two items that I'm going to combine together then, if you see those permit fees where you were 180 over your final budget um, and your mortgage tax where you were 190, again, this is a trend we've seen in a lot of local governments. Um, this is a combination of construction that went on, um, a lot of folks doing renovations given that they were at home, um, as well as a lot of refinancings with rates going down. So um, there you had some very uh, positive variances. Finally, the one uh, downside was uh, in the fines and forfeited bail. Now, the, the Justice Court was closed for a good portion of the year. And also with some of the parking, you know, less parking going on, as well as I believe some waivers and things, there was, you know, less in the fine area. That has, um, you know, we've seen that rebound um, this year somewhat in a lot of places. So that's kind of a quick highlight overall versus budget. Next up, just going to very briefly go through, um, we present this because, uh, you know, hopefully it's a, a high level summary that might help you a little bit with some of your budgeting uh, efforts, not going to go through and, and cover every number, uh, you can see, you know, what they are, but um, just want to, again, give you the ideas of what's been, uh, what's happened over a number of years. I'll just quickly highlight that on your property taxes, they have ranged an increase of 1.2 to 2.7% increases over the last five years. So relatively uh, low rates of increase um, and within you know, your property tax caps. Again, you can see the uh, increases in the, uh, in the sales tax, which is the non-property tax distribution. And again, that 2019, if you see that 1290 um, versus 2020, um, those the the year did not include a uh, 20 did not include the full year of uh, of the tax rate increase. Um, beyond that, again, just just to, to give you some ideas on where some of those trends are. Again, if you looked at the day camp fees going back, you're in the 300 to four, you know, 500,000 range on that. Next up, some of the expenditures. 
If you see here again across the board, um, compared to your final budgets, um, you have positive variances. You spent less than uh, than your final budget um, planned on, or almost across the board. Um, these increases, if you look at the final budget we talked about, you had grown those. A lot of those are related to uh, um, costs related to COVID or costs related to uh, storm damage. Um, so that, that drove a lot. You can see that's in some of the other expenditures, not these sort of recurring categories that we have here. Um, in the, uh, in the, the largest variance, the overall, this, uh, the other category, most of that is your general government, right? So, you know, your, your mayor's office, finance, IT, all of those support functions. And you can see that you had uh, about a million dollars. There was 1.7 overall, a million of that is in the general government. And then some of the other areas were home and community. You had 420,000 in savings versus the budget and in culture and rec 340. So kind of a pretty good story across the board versus budget on the expense side. Um, finally, here we have, um, you know, five-year trends again on the, uh, on some of your expenditures. I think the thing I would just point out on this is the relative stability across the board in many of these expenditures, um, you know, being managed pretty smoothly. Um, the safety inspections were down again, due to there was fewer, uh, I believe, you know, events and things that needed to be uh, to be inspected. Um, one last thing is the, the ERS PFRS number did go up a little bit. That was mostly driven by your police retirement um, contribution, where the rates for the, this year were higher uh, as set by the Office of the State Comptroller. You're going to see that reverse in the, in the coming year. Um, but that was uh, something to, to point out. So that is the sum on really on your, your profit and loss statement, as we call it, or your statement of, uh, of activities. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Scott to talk about fund balance. Thank you, Gary. Uh, so as Gary said, and as I said, I think earlier in this uh, presentation that overall this year fund balance went up in your general fund by the 1.7 million back on uh, an earlier slide. And that's why when you look at the bottom of the 2021 column on this uh, presentation, you see uh, you know, that the total fund balance has grown to $17.1 million uh, at the end of the 21 uh, year. Your fund balance is made up of several components. Uh, in 21, uh, you have some uh, small amount in prepaid expenditures that are considered non-spendable because the cash went out the door for these, but they benefit uh, the next fiscal year. Then you have restricted fund balance. And one of the uh, changes in the restricted fund balance is this new thing uh, for special purposes. In the past, this was in its own uh, fund, but under a new uh, governmental accounting standards board pronouncement, uh, it now is required to be reported within the general fund. So the resources from this other fund came into the general fund and then is restricted. It had no you know, true impact on your, your current year revenues or expenses. Uh, there's some money committed, as you could see, for uh, some future capital projects. So this would require board action to, to, to move these funds and, and use them for the capital purpose that you are uh, intending of 315,000. Looks like about 20,000 was used uh, during this year. The assigned fund balance is made up of two components. Uh, 481,000 are your purchase orders. So these were commitments that you made to purchase goods or services prior to May 31st. And uh, they were not completed as of that date. Maybe the goods didn't arrive, supply chain issues, whatever, whatever it might be. So there's 481,000 of, of items that were intended to be spent in the 2021 fiscal year uh, that were not uh, Finish being spent. Probably most of this has been spent already in the 21-22 year. That 481,000 amends the budget that you're in right now for 21-22 to allow you uh, to fund those obligations that, that were uh, committed for. You gave back, like you have for the last four years, $600,000 when you put the 21-22 budget together that you're in right now. 
you estimated that your expenses would exceed your revenues by $600,000. And you balance that spending plan by taking money from your fund balance, your savings account, because if you hadn't done that, you would have either had to raise property taxes an extra 600,000 or reduce spending 600,000 or some combination of, of both of those items. So this was a decision uh, that was made by the board to give back, you know, essentially 600,000 in property tax relief for 21-22. So when you have a total fund balance of $17.1 million and you back out all these other pieces, what you see you're left with is an unassigned fund balance that totals $14.6 million or about $2 million higher uh, than uh, what was in there in the prior year, mostly from the profit that, as we said, you generated uh, this year of about $1.7 million. When you compare that unassigned fund balance of $14.6 million to your current budget of approximately $39.5 million, uh, that amount represents approximately 37% of your budget. If you take the total fund balance of the 17 million compared to the 39.5, that's about 43%. That is a very strong fund balance position. Um, but uh, as someone who is working here on Mamaroneck Avenue in Harrison, uh, we, we see, you know, we saw obviously a lot of damage after this fiscal year in the Mamaroneck area from all the storms uh, that happened. So, you know, for you to have this kind of healthy fund balance is probably something that, that, that is important uh, given, you know, the, the, the massive infrastructure uh, damage that, that was caused uh, mm -hmm. by, these, uh, by these storms. So the village is in, in a strong uh, financial position for its general fund. Yeah. Uh, just to touch briefly on, and we're almost done, uh, just to touch briefly on a couple of the other funds that the village operates. Uh, the water fund uh, started the year with about 2.4 million in it. And again, it's, it's based on, uh, you know, water usage. Some of this money, you know, comes from, uh, 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 I think, the joint waterworks. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, with, you know, potentially during a pandemic uh, time with more people being home, maybe more water usage versus, you know, maybe people traveling in the past. That's probably one of the, the drivers for the increase in the water fund balance. Capital fund is more of a long-term nature. Uh, it shows a deficit, but that's because there is borrowing to be done on certain projects right now. Many of your projects are actually funded by interfund loans from like, the, because of your strong fund balance position, you fronted the cash uh, that is needed to, to keep these projects going from your, your general fund primarily. Uh, once the bonds uh, for these projects are issued, then the general fund uh, can be repaid some of the cash advances and it would eliminate uh, the deficit in the, in the capital funds. The sewer fund kind of was relatively uh, you know, unchanged from the previous year, fund balance going from 335,000 to 357,000. You then have a debt service fund uh, that started the year with 4.1 million. Uh, you would, you're using approximately $160,000 uh, uh, to offset some of the debt service costs. And now there's 4.3 million in there. These monies can only be used to offset future principal on your debt service obligations going forward. So every year you budget for principal and interest on your borrowed monies. Uh, this money could be used to help offset those costs against the principal amount uh, that, that you have to pay each year. And then finally, uh, there is a statement in your financial statements. Uh, it appears on the full financial statement on page 13. And, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, the way the Governmental Accounting Standards Board makes us present financial statements, this statement kind of has to go first, uh, this statement of net position, which, as I mentioned at the outset, has to do with what we call full accrual accounting, treating the village as if it was a commercial uh, enterprise. And, and everything gets, you know, picked up in the financial statements, all long-term obligations 
and so forth. So what you see on here is, as we presented on the first line, the fund balance, the thing you deal with on a daily basis, your general fund, your water fund, your sewer fund, debt service fund, you ended the year with a $16 million total fund balance across all the funds. Yet on this statement, and it's the first statement that's in the financial statements, the bottom line number is what shows, a negative $45 million. So people might say, hey, we're not in good shape here. We're, we're $45 million in the hole. That's not exactly true because one of the main things that you see on here uh, near the bottom of this list of things is this OPEB liability for $98 million, a negative effect of $98 million. OPEB is your other post-employment benefits. These are the benefits that you've agreed to pay uh, your retirees in retirement in, in paying for their uh, health coverage. And this is a present value calculation that your actuary does for you to present value that future benefit over you know, many years back to today. Um, so this is a long-term liability. Obviously each year in the budget, you have to budget your health insurance on a pay as you go amount. You have your insurance, a cost for health insurance, you budget that every year and you pay that every year. This is a very long-term future look at what those obligations are, along with your bonds that you have out there that you've issued primarily for capital type construction. So those are things, if, if somebody asks you, why does this statement show a negative 45 million, yours and most municipalities in New York State are, are, are showing a deficit on this schedule primarily because of OPEB. Also because New York State does not allow you to fund OPEB liabilities or anybody. That would require state legislation, kind of like the state pension system. The state pension system's in good shape because it has assets. There's yep. something each year to it. And you know the, the state pension systems have billions of dollars in assets offsetting these future liabilities for pensions. With OPEP, you're just a pay-as-you-go payer. You pay your premiums every month, and that's it. There's no set-aside for, for any future costs. So until New York State legislation changes, everybody will be facing these, these OPEP liabilities. And that's why that statement, for most places, comes out to be a, a negative uh, net position. So with that, uh, Gary and I have probably spoken far too much already. Uh, we'd be glad to take any comments or questions that you uh, have on any of these numbers. Governor Board, uh, any comments, questions? I just want to point uh, to thank you for a thorough job and to thank our staff for once again uh, ensuring that we are in good fiscal health. Governor Board? Nobody? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening, all. Have a good evening. Mayor. Okay. What? Mayor. What? Thanks for saying that, because we work very hard on the budget, and we try to control costs, and we try to look for every avenue of revenue that we can. And Augie, Dan, and I, uh, along with our support staff, um, obsess about it. So I appreciate that very much. You're welcome, and I, I like it. I, I like the title of your. Uh, yeah, I just changed it. Yeah, I just changed it. Thanks, Scott, for giving me the number. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Nice job. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda: order the bills, manual vouchers, and tonight's manual voucher number is twelve thousand one hundred thirty-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Uh, any questions or concerns from the board? None? Okay, Len, you have your hands up for this item? Len. Len, unmute yourself. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, actually had a... Uh, one question for the auditors, and that would have been on page 37. Um, last year, we issued $5 million worth of debt and paid 1.95 worth of maturity. 
that means that we um, went uh, borrowed about three million dollars more than we um, than we paid back. So in actuality, we actually spent $1.3 million more than we brought in last year. And you just can't dismiss long-term debt because eventually you have to pay it. So we, we really on the operating side, we were ahead. But when you add in the fact that we bonded $3 million, of, uh, $3 million more than we paid back in the bond, that means that we ran a deficit overall. Thank you. It's a different, it, we didn't run a deficit. They were clear about that. That is dangerous talk, especially from someone from the budget committee. We did not run a deficit. We are not allowed to run deficits under right. New York state law. That's correct. Uh, That's not reading the numbers correctly. That's what that is. Not reading the numbers correctly and it's extrapolating where you don't have all the information. Uh, next, I need a, a, a motion on the uh, order of bills. So moved. Second, what we call roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Natchez? Dan, unmute yourself. <laughs> I, I gotta be right, yes. yes. Okay. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, next up uh, is the regular order of the bills, and this is $3,272,509.73. Anybody on the board have any questions or concerns? No. Need a motion? So moved. I need a second? Second. Forty, please. Trustee is young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, there's no old business. Uh, new business resolution authorizing contract with Zenicity. The board uh, wanted us to not uh, move forward on that. Resolution authorizing budget transfers for purchase of public safety customer survey toolkit. This is for the police department to uh, better evaluate the customer service uh, aspect of the office. This is $37. $170 transferred from a contingent account uh, to police department contract services. I'll make the motion and I'll note that the chief sent an email that the word anonymous will be on the card so that it'll be clear to people who are getting these cards that their input will be anonymous. Okay, I will second that motion. Morgan, you please. Trustees, Young? Yes. Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yeah. Yes. Mayor hey, Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is resolution authorizing execution of paving contracts for Harbor Island Park. Uh, the last time this, con this park was paved was 30 years ago uh, when the uh, recreation director was three years old. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the folks that are doing the pavement are Moreno Brothers Corporation. They did the large paving contract that the village did a few years ago. And uh, I watched them pave Mamaroneck Avenue in the middle of the night. And uh, they were a well-oiled machine, I'll tell you that. They knew what they were doing. Uh, we, we, we got this through the village of Scarsdale. We're picking it back on the village of Scarsdale contract. Uh, Jerry, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, Mayor said everything and, and uh, you know, reminded me that Jason's very young. So <laughs> I'm only saying because he pointed that out himself when we were right. in the worst. Of course, of course he did. Wise beyond his years. <laughs> yes, he is. 
this is four hundred ninety-two thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars and sixty cents. And, and just taking a walk or a ride down the park, you will see why this is uh, necessary to do as ASAP. Mayor. Yes, Sally. I updated the resolution and added that it would be up to that number, not go over that number, as Trustee Tafour had asked, and you agreed. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we have we have a, a comment from the audience, uh, Glenn. 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 Glenn, go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, this is going to be paid out of uh, through capital um, spending, correct? Yes. And number two, I know there's a section of the parking lot that's owned by the county. Uh, did we contact the county and ask the county if they wanted to pick you back off of us to do their uh, paving? The, 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 the county has said they were going to, they're going to pay behind the sewage treatment plant themselves. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Bogey, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Next up is item 4D, uh, LED retrofit and upgrade of Lanza Field Lights. Uh, for those of you who have never been down uh, Harbor Island uh, during a spring, summer, or fall evening, there is usually a ball game going on under the lights. Uh, those lights were put in late 80s, early 90s. Uh, too much uh, strum and drang, and uh, I think it's been well documented that it was a, a good decision that the village made to put in those lights. Those lights are big old incandescent bulbs that use a lot of electricity. They require uh, staff to be there to turn them on, to monitor them, monitor them when they're on, and then to turn them off. This could all now be done with a lot less electricity, with better control of the lights, and without the overtime incurred. Uh, so this is $244,000 uh, to outfit the lights uh, for LEDs, light emitting diode, retrofit, lands of fuel. Uh, any questions or concerns? No. Glenn, you have your hand up. Okay, no. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Bogey, please. Trustee <coughs> Young. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? <coughs> Trustee Tafort? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is an item uh, sewer rent fee for Westchester General Waterworks customers in the village of America. What this will do, uh, this allows the community to pay for sewer repairs and sewer upgrades via, via customers' actual usage. Uh, you know, it used to be that you know, the sewer expenses were incurred based upon your property taxes. So uh, an 80 year old person who owned a house and was paying $20,000 in taxes uh, was paying the same uh, as a family of six in a house paying $20,000 in taxes, uh, which you know they might be taking uh, 12 showers a day and using assorted facilities much more often. Uh, and this also captures uh, people that aren't on the tax rolls. The, the school system pays this, churches pay this. Uh, other, uh, Westchester County pays this, uh, who is a big user of uh, water in the village of America. And it comes to, uh, comes to $1.45 per thousand gallons. So the less water you use, the less you pay. Uh, that in some substance is what this is. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Glenn, you have your hand up. Yeah, is um, is that a raise over our previous year? This is just no, it's not. This is just a different way of configuring it. So the Westchester. Oh, yeah, this... Let me let me finish the the answer, yeah. please. 
So to West, just the joint waterworks doesn't have to have three separate accounting systems uh, for the three municipalities. Yeah. Oh, so this was that 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 was presented before, and we're finally voting on it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, we are finally voting. <laughs> uh, I need a motion. So moved. I'll second. All oh, equal roll. Trustees Young. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Lucas. Um, I'm gonna vote yes, but was this a work session? Yeah, a while back. A while back. Okay, it was several. It was it was like about more than a month ago, right? Yeah. Okay. Trustee Tapor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, scheduling a public hearing on the 2022-2023 tentative budget. Uh, this schedules the public hearing for March 28th, which is two weeks hence from tonight. Any questions or concerns? I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. Pull the roll, please. Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing for PLLB 2022 to exceed tax cap if needed. Uh, I've explained this before. Uh, if if a community wants to go over the tax cap, uh, do we even know what our tax cap is this year? Do we know what number that is? 2.1 point? No, I don't know. Okay, we don't know what the tax cap number is at this moment. We will find it out soon, I'm sure. Uh, but this allows the community to go over the tax cap if need be. Uh, it, I don't think we have, we definitely haven't while I was mayor, uh, but it's good to have the law in your back pocket in case something happens between now and uh, the time we pass the budget that uh, would require us uh, to go over the cap. Uh, so this is scheduling a public hearing and a public hearing would be for March 28th. Any questions or concerns? Uh, one item, uh, Mr. Mayor, in the resolution, it says uh, uh, the March 28, 2021, it'll be March 28, 2022. Thank you. Yeah, that, that is an important point. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The time machine is not in the capital budget this year. Okay. Time machine. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anybody have any questions or concerns? No. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Morgan. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? No. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? No. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Penny Cash. Uh, resolution establishing Petty Cash account for building fund. Uh, this is a petty cash account of $100, $100 uh, to give the building department the ability to make change when people pay in cash. Jerry, any questions, concern, anything you want to add on this? No, Mayor, it just uh, resets our drawer. Uh, as you know, or many people know, I'm up at the building department at least three days a week. And we have also helping us is uh, Jonathan Corvino from Augie's uh, office. Uh, we're uh, doing a lot of, we're making a lot of changes up in the building department, and this is part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any questions or concerns from the board? I need a motion. So moved. I need a second. 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 For roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resolution uh, item 1I, resolution appointing a poet laureate for the village of Amaranek. And I believe the town of Amaranek is going to appoint the same 
poet laureate. Uh, for years, we had a poet laureate. Uh, she was a lovely, lovely lady named um, Miss Mary Louise Cox. Uh, and she uh, passed away recently. And the village uh, and the town believe that it's good to have another one. Ms. Cox uh, was instrumental in uh, doing the poetry live uh, in the village, which uh, stirred and uh, inspired a lot of young people to write poetry and to express their thoughts uh, through poetry and their feelings. And if, if, if you uh, never attended, I, I urge you to attend or at least watch it on uh, LMC TV. We have a lot of talented and uh, heartfelt youngsters in this community. And, but this is to appoint a gentleman named Mr. Michael Collins uh, as the village is poet laureate. Uh, Mr. Collins is a published and acclaimed uh, poet. I asked uh, the Arts Council uh, for information on Mr. Collins uh, last night and they sent me his website and he actually has a book of poetry that was inspired by his uh, contemplative time in Harbor Island Park. Uh, you know, he, he writes a lot of interesting uh, poems and he was uh, a teacher uh, of poetry at NYU. And I think he would be a good person to fill in for Ms. Cox. Uh, not that anyone could fill in for Ms. Cox, but he would he'd be able to uh, move that uh, program forward in a positive direction. Uh, so I would be honored uh, in uh, the month of March to uh, nominate a gentleman named Michael Collins uh, to be the Village of Mamaroneck's Poet Laureate. I need a second. Second. Call roll, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? With pleasure, yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Uh, resolution authorizing the retention of GOV HR to conduct a village attorney search. And I know that this is something that uh, Trustee Natchez, uh, Chafour, and Lucas uh, are uh, champion, championing. Uh, I, I, I personally, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I listen. I was behind the hiring of Janet and Saudi, full-time village attorney. Uh, it was a different time and a different uh, situation in the village. Uh, we had gone through a point where we had spent $10 million on litigation over four or five years. Uh, you know, I believe that the village is being well served by Mr. Sposino and his firm. Uh, we have litigation, people have sued us. Uh, you know, we have three village of Mamaroneck district leaders who are currently suing the village. You, you know, that, that is not litigation we started. We have Hampshire suing the village. That is not litigation we started. And I don't believe it's litigation that's been stirred. And I've seen litigation stirred before in my life. And we are doing very well in all those litigations. We won the first three. We're in good shape on the Hampshire litigation. And I believe, uh, you know, Mr. Sposino has been guiding this village well. I don't think that this is a time to change horses. Uh, and I had a conversation uh, with the head of Gov HR today, and because I, I wanted to tell her, because I really do like her, uh, she has worked with the village of Mamaroneck before, and I wanted to tell her that I was voting no on this tonight, and that it was not a reflection upon how I viewed her, because if I, if I was in favor of doing this, I would actually encourage hiring her. But she didn't know that, uh, it, this wasn't a unanimous choice of the board, and that surprised me. Uh, and she was taken aback because she will have to ask somebody to uh, come here and be a village attorney without there being the full support of the board in a time when the board is obviously in flux. So I, I don't think that this is a wise time to move forward with this proposal. I think we should shake out and see what the year brings. But that being said, that's, you know, as, as the man said, that's all I have to say on this. Somebody want to make a motion? Um, Lou? I'm going to vote no because I uh, I believe that the, the motives behind this may be suspect given the uh, interpersonal relationships with um, uh, 
some of the litigants who have sued the village. So I think that you can wait until after those suits have been settled. So no. I'll make a motion to retain GovHR for an attorney search. Second. Hold the roll. Trustees Young? No. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. But just know that you're going to be asking someone to come to a village where they don't know if their job is going to be secure in the future. Well, Tom, unfortunately, you said that to a couple of candidates. And, and, but, but it's the truth, Laura. I, 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 I would not in good conscience let somebody apply for a job Tom, Tom, knowing we do that so, it's, it's insecure. Okay, You're asking somebody to leave I, a position. Tom, we do things by a vote of three. Yeah, that's and it. Some, you and, 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 you know, usually in the majority rules, and it's just yes, unfortunate. And you're, you're going to do Tom, it, Laura. Can I please finish? May I please finish? May I okay, please finish? Yeah, let her finish, please. Make a decision. It's a vote of three. And frequently, you're not happy with that decision, so you want to do something else. Uh -huh. Lots of times, I'm not happy with the decision, but it's the decision, and we go with the majority. Okay. This is a decision that's been made. We made a decision a year ago. We offered it to a couple of candidates. Unfortunately, you told them that you that you didn't support it. It's not it's not teamwork, Tom. It's not no, teamwork. No, Nora, should I should I have lied to them and told them that I did support it? Should I have told them that their job is secure when I don't believe that their job is secure? Well, well they're because I, because Nora, you did not tell Joellen. I did. I did what I did when I talked to her initially. I absolutely said it wasn't. Well, that, that's not. She was taken aback by. Well, what I, I did. I did tell her that when so I talked. She must not have remembered. Okay, I told her that when I talked to her initially. And you know, uh, I, I, uh, can no, I say no, something I'm very briefly? Finished. I'm not briefly. Finished. I'm not finished. People need to know what the situation is here. You know, you, you, oh. you're asking people. Nora, I'm talking. You're you're asking people to leave a position to come to a position where it's not going to be the most stable position. And, and that's just, and, and there's the possibility of that. And to not tell them that is disingenuous. So I guess what I'm hearing is, if you don't like the decision, we that's can have it work around. There's a lot of decisions I don't like. And, and, okay. and the, if you've noticed, there's a lot of votes that don't go my way. But I'm not going to let somebody get hired without letting them know how I feel. It's not fair. Okay, so it's basically, you're, fair. You're, so basically, what you're saying is you're going to block hiring a full-time oh, attorney. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to tell. Is, I'm, I'm going to let that person. I'm going to let that person make a decision which, like an adult. Which is a commission that, which is a commitment that we ran on in 2017. Yes. And, and, and let me tell you something. I, I did run on it, mm -hmm. but you know what? Part of being an elected official is learning by watching yep by, by observing and feeling what you think is best and if if something that you said four years ago isn't holding true today you don't have to stick with it you, you could be honest with people and say what i thought four years ago based upon what had happened in 2007 2008 2009 was not then the case in 2017 2018 2019 in your opinion in my opinion Good. of course it's may, all my opinion may i may i very briefly very briefly what, what, what was the memo that, that, that you were mentioning many years ago from very three important lawyers made the case for why an in-house attorney is needed. That hasn't changed. That it's very convenient now to change that doesn't mean that this village is better served by having a village attorney and an external attorney, which can be, which should be a good professional such as Bob. Bob may be continued, but what this village needs is the two of them. Now you can change or not when it's convenient to you, but. I come to this not from a political stand, but from what is interested. And after five years, it's clear, as I've been in my career as an attorney, in-house, outside, that yeah. that's what the village needs. So I'm voting in conscious, and you never respect those kind of things. But anyway, oh, we'll, no, we'll... Victor, I respect your vote. I disagree. Let's see how the... All I'm saying is I'm not going to hold my tongue when it comes to... It's not fair. How can you ask somebody? Think about this, folks. Seriously, think about this. How can you ask somebody? You're not going to be here, Victor, next year. You're just not going to be. You're not running again. And I, well, God bless I, I'll you. be here. You're not I'll stop. be here. And how do you're you even mention that? How does it? What does it matter? 
Because what kind of person? Be, what kind of comment is that? The board is going to change, and the next board might not want to have an in-house attorney. So you're making a commitment for after you're going to be gone. In essence, you know. Everybody's what kind of comment is that? What it's kind of rationality. It's right. an observation of the truth. I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings. No oh, feelings on that, it's sir. Just that's not right. Let's office, close. So let's close the discussion. I move to close debate. Trust the young. Uh, if this were a four-one vote or or unanimous vote, I move to close debate. Can I have no, a second? If this you're were, not, you're out of order. If that. this were a four-to-one or or unanimous vote, and there's a second. Point would be well made, but I it's three-two, and um and, and and the mayor is correct that it's that there's it's not a second. A, we already voted on this. Position. They're wasting time. You're not voting on that. If you're out of order. We're moving on to the next topic. Uh. Resolution accepting what's just a oh, I want to check with Augie. Did the vote, was the vote completed? Can yeah, we vote on this? The motion by Nora Luca, second by Dan Natchez. Uh, trustee, no, yes, 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 no. The vote was Thanks, Augie. Thank you. So there wasn't debate. There was nothing. I, I was making a comment that you all jumped on. Mm -hmm. uh, accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Brevort Lane replacement project. I explained this in a work session. It's a broken pipe is actually in the city of Rye, uh, but it's part of the city of Rye that is uh, serviced by Westchester Joint Waterworks. There is a portion of Rye that is not serviced by uh, the, the private water company, but it's serviced by us. Uh, this pipe though does provide water to the village of Amaranic uh, residents. Uh, so, What's going on here? We, we, we're accepting this as a joint project. That means all three communities pay for the replacement. But then we recover the uh, costs from the residents of Rye via their water bill. So with that being said, it's 425 uh, feet of transit water main over Port Lane. The resolution doesn't say all costs, and I would like that put in. It has specific figures, but it doesn't say that all costs are, and that, that allegedly is what uh, the email from Westchester Joint Waterworks would indicate, and I would like to put that in the resolution. Okay, I, I, that's fine if you want to put it in, but that's the way it always operates. That's what he's, he pointed okay. out in the email. There's so in, it's in the resolve, the project should be funded through the appropriate of the water fund balance for future issuance of debt. With all, uh, um, the right. Okay. Uh, okay, it should be the, on the first uh, acceptance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees accepts the capital project as a joint capital project, uh, uh, including all costs associated with the project. That makes no sense. I think it does. Okay. And then continue and be it further resolved. So I did you get that? It, 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 it's, it's barely English. I think it should be, if you're going to put all, it should be in the second paragraph, uh, second whereas. No, because the whereas is an indication, but the be it resolved is the requirement. Say it again. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees accepts the capital project as a joint capital project, including all costs associated with said project, and be it further resolved, blah, blah, blah. What you're saying then is that we're incurring all costs. I'm saying that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's exactly what you're saying. Well, then, if put, then, if you put it there, that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Whereas are not binding. I, Dan, what you're saying, you're resolving that the village of the marriage. Okay, then, would, would okay, then, 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 I, then I will do it this way. Now, therefore, be resolved that the village board of trustees accepts the capital project as a joint capital project, provided that all costs 
associated with the project are included and then be further resolved? I don't know where it's going. I, I, I don't, I, I, we've never done that and I'm not gonna, you know, if, if you wanna make that uh, amendment. I've so moved. Oh, wait, yeah. wait a minute, let's see if we can phrase it. Well, why do we even need to? This, this is, we, we got an email from West Virginia Waterworks saying, yes, it will be all for us. This, no, this it, is, it didn't say that. It's, uh, it this, implied this that. Is, it didn't say that. That's my this, concern. This is what we've always done. Doesn't mean that it's right. Well, it doesn't mean that it's wrong either, Dan. And, and, and you, you have not brought clarity to this. In order to protect our this village, and not being paying, not paying things that that are not being uh, paying things out of our out of, out of other things that we don't recoup. That doesn't make sense. I, I don't see what you're talking about. What, what example can you give? How about wait a minute? How about how about the second paragraph from share of twenty seven point six percent equates to a village cost not to exceed one hundred and four thousand dollars. You can't say not to exceed on something like this because you don't know what's going to happen. Well, then they have to come back. Exactly. That's part of the problem. Estimated. Okay. This is all estimated okay. cost. Why are we, why, why, excuse me, I'm sorry. Why, in God's name, are, are we trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel here? It's protecting our pack taxpayers. It, 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 we have always protected our that we don't family. that we do not be paying uh, unreasonable things for bond councils and other council lawyer other th expenses that are incurred on you know perfecting this project. And and they told you it's all costs. This is just to accept the project. That's all this is. It isn't about no. Cost. This is committing us. No, it isn't, Dan. This is just saying. That, that, that this is a joint project. That's what this is. Mr. Sposino, am I wrong about that? Uh, excuse me, that's correct, Mayor. The issue is, the issue before the Board of Trustees is whether this is a joint project or an individual project. The expenditures are made by the joint waterworks and then charged back. How many times do I have to chew this per? I've made a motion. Does anybody want to second it? What hap What happens if the costs go up? I'm just, Tom, what happens if the costs they, go up? They come back and they say costs have gone up. We hit rock. Uh, you know, the, 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 the price of pipe has tripled in the past month. Which has know. happened before. Yeah, they, they, they'll ask the board to adopt a separate resolution. Yes, they come back. Project total. If they, go, if they go over our share, they, if they go over their, their estimate, they come back. You know, it's like any other thing, they put a contingency in. If they go under, they don't charge us as much. But Dan's not comfortable with the answer that they got that they sent today. All right, well, there's one person. Well, you know, we all have fiscal responsibilities. And I understand that, Nora. And so I'm just, we, we have to get things done too. Yeah, we do. And if we did it but in a more polite this isn't about manner, the I think cost. it would be nice. Nora, this is, for the last time, this isn't about the cost. All this is about is accepting this as a joint project. That's what this is. They put in, but they could have not put in the cost there. They could have just said, this is a joint project. They do that as a courtesy. Well, I mean, let's face it. <laughs> it's not a courtesy, Tom. But thank it, it you. is, Dan. Well, you, you, it's a, it's a joint project. You have you have you can either accept that it's a joint project or not accept that it's a joint project. If you don't accept that it's a joint project, then it becomes a village of a Marinic project, and we don't share the cost with the other two communities because it affects our residents. We get. I'm trying to give you a hint here. That's it's like our it. residents that aren't getting their water, and Rye residents. Nobody in Harrison's not getting their water. Nobody in the town of Marinick's not getting their water. The village of Marinick residents aren't getting the water. They're paid, this is for something in Rye. No, you're wrong, Dan. You didn't listen to it twice. I explained it. This is a pipe in Rye that supplies people in the village of Marinick too. I explained that twice. I got an email from one of them today saying, when are we going to start work on this? It's a Greenhaven pipe, correct? 
I, I don't understand Dan's motion. I don't know the need for it, and it, and it really is a moot point. Let's, let's move on. Well, you know, you think it's a moot point. I think it would and be nice. second didn't I, vote on it. You know what? I, okay. I, I just, Do you know what it is? Do you I'll, know what it is? Can I finish? Sure. It, it would be really nice if a board member raised a concern and other board members were polite and respectful. I think that's a bare minimum of what we should do. You, you know I'm more? willing to go with it for today because I'm really okay. tired of this fighting. But I'm okay. also tired. I'm also tired of disrespecting other people's questions. There's just no. no Tom, the, I'm tired you know, of it. The questions were asked and answered, and I'm sorry that you know you, you're sticking up for your pal Dan there. Uh, but that's you know what, Nora? Tough. But, but yeah. you know what, Nora? It, it, this this isn't how it works. Sometimes it isn't pretty, and, and, and this isn't a tea party. It's politics, and it's yeah, governor. And, it, and it's and, not, and, and, and it's not political about, about this, except that it's you want to. Actually, trying to be polite and collegial, which I think is something that everybody on this board needs yeah. to do. Everybody on this board. Yeah. You know, it, 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 People Everybody on this board, this people on this board talk about polite and collegial, but then you know, in reality, you know, you, you were stabbing each other in the back. But I'm just I'm just honest about my antipathy. You know, you, other people just hide it better. I don't understand the uh, uh, trustee Natchez's uh, uh, suggested amendment. I don't think anybody does. That's my point. So um, wh wh where are we? What are we doing? I made a motion. If somebody seconds it, they second it. If they don't, they don't. Okay. There's no second. Okay. I make a motion to adopt the resolution accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks for Bought Land Replacement Project as is written. So moved. Okay, please call the roll. Oh, wait, we got a second. You need a second? I made the motion. You second. Oh, okay. Got it. I see Young. Yes. Trustee Natchez? No. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Jafar? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resolution accepting a bench donation of Harbor Park. Uh, Ms. Janice Goldplang is, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yes, it is. Desirous of donating a bench and plaque in the village of Amarnik to be placed in the Harbor on West Basin in love and memory of Roy and Charlotte Goldplain uh, in the amount of $2,241. Uh, thank you to the Goldplain family. Uh, you need a motion? So moved. Second. Boggy. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Murphy? Aye. Uh, communication to the board round two. Glenn? Yes. Uh, my apologies. I just like to uh, clarify. I'm not saying that we're running a yearly deficit. What I meant to say basically is the debt of the village went up. Our long-time debt went up because we spent more in bonds than we paid off in bonds, which exceeded the operating. The operating is fine, but you also have to be continent of the fact that at some point you have to address the fact that you can't bond and, and keep increasing the long-term debt. At some point, there has to be an equilibri equilibrium between how much you spend in the operating budget to pay your bonds and how much you spend in a given year on new bonds. That's all I was pointing out. Operating, you're absolutely right. I apologize for wording it wrong. The only thing I want you to be aware of is long-term debt. We, we, we are bonding more than we are paying back in the bonds. And that's been going on for, for a few years. It's something you just have to be aware of and at some point has to be addressed. Um, that You mentioned the flood areas. Two more that you should be looking at is Hoyt Avenue because that completely got, got, got um, wrecked and Revere Road because that, that's where it starts. That's where the speed starts and it goes all the way down through the village. Hoyt, Hoyt Avenue, the business, Moisture Brothers, they were under 10 feet of water. That whole section 
going all the way up to Waverly Avenue, it, it's it's part of, of the overall problem. When it hits the curbs, that water, the water just goes right over the banks and and off. Um, actually, actually, Hoyt Avenue is in the, the area that we talked about. Yes. Oh, all, all, the, all the way down that far? Okay. Yeah, we went from the railroad bridge uh, north. Okay, thank you. And then, um, uh, fi finally, Nora is right. You guys can disagree on a, a hundred uh, di different things, and and you can get heated at times. The bottom line is, you have different people who look at the the village a different way. Actually, Tom, I. Uh, I kind of support you uh, sometimes because anytime I see a new village manager, the first thing I tell them is congratulations, welcome to the village of Meredith. Rent don't buy. Because we, we at one time we went through many, many village village uh, attorneys with, with, with each regime. That being said, you know, Maybe you get somebody and, and, and you really like them. I don't, I, I personally don't have a problem with the attorney we have now. I, I think it's a good, but in a three to two vote. When, you know, what, what, it, I, what, I, what I told the attorneys when, when we were interviewing them was I would give them a fair shot and uh, not make a decision until uh, they had, uh, but you know, I, I, I was just honest with them, but I, I also told them that I would you know, give them a fair shot. If that's, I'm, I, I can't complain about that because like I said, I've, I've told many of village attorney that at one time that was a high turnover position in this village, yes, you yes. know? All right, thanks, Glenn. You're have welcome. Good, have a good Patty's day. Uh, you too, by the problem. way, Yankees made a big trade. Who? Uh, they got Donaldson, they traded Sanchez, Minnesota. Uh, Josh Donaldson, third baseman at, at shortstop. So something, some homework to do when you get get go home, Tom. Bye bye. I watch ESPN tonight. <laughs> uh, Robert, oh, you got that? Yeah, you got it on mute. You're on mute. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a nonpartisan statement to the mayor and all the trustees. Please attend to the people's business and refrain from making negative comments about your fellow trustees just because they may disagree with you. This does not reflect well on the friendly village. I felt this was worth repeating. Some of you have not heard it. Thank you. Go ahead, you shake your head, shake your hand, Tom. Yeah, you know, Robert, that's, that's you're, saying, you're saying you're nonpartisan. Right. I am. I made no, it. No, no, Robert, Robert, let me finish. You're not nonpartisan. You, you, you were on the nominating committee. You were calling people uh, while you were on the nominating committee advocating for Mr. Natchez. While you were supposed to be making a decision, you were already made a decision. So please, sir, don't tell me you're nonpartisan. Mayor, this no, is personal no, 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 business. No, no, no. has nothing I, to do here. In no, this no, no it does. It does. No, it does not. This is the kind of, you know, under the table, behind the back stuff that goes on in this community. And then, you know, you all sit there acting hurt and chagrin. It, it's, it's nonsense. It really is. So have a good evening. But don't, ex I, I'm just not going to be quiet about it anymore. There's not going to be this gentleman's agreement where, you know, I get stabbed in the back constantly and I keep my mouth shut. So Tom, no one's gonna, accused you ever of being quiet. Not gonna about that. You know that. Not going to happen. You, you, you're That's showing your true colors, Tom. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Thank you. And Robert, you know, do me a favor. When you start sending emails in the morning about me, make sure you don't send it to people who are friends of me because they send it to me. Thanks a lot. Have a good, good night. Good to, good to know. Yeah, we good can have know. a real conversation at some point. And yeah. honestly, you know, we're not going to, you know, Robert, I, I've had conversations with you. And during those conversations, I've said, Robert, if you ever have a question, please call me. Let me know. And you say, yes. And, and I did. Go. And, and I, I had a conversation. You want to extend this? This is you never this is do. not the board it's of trustees. You're focusing on you're me. Nice I don't man. know why. You're, you're I'm right just a citizen. I'm just around. a resident. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the best of the, of the village. Uh, 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 I hope you are too. You're here to protect your political friends. What about uh, your political friends? Yes, this goodbye. is wrong. This is wrong, Mayor. 
This is very no, wrong. It's wrong. That's fine. It's wrong. This is very you wrong. Say that all you want. You know what, Victor? I've been here too long and I've put up with too much in the last few years. There's been, there's been no support. You know, there's, there's been. Get, you know, don't get no, personal. This is very no wrong. Collegiality. Stop. There, there, you know, you, Ke Kelly. Stop. Kelly got Stop. used here. Stop, you know, Mayor. Was, Stop. You're, it is ridiculous. Stop. I'm not stopping. Let's what finish. This is not personal. We're you're out of order on yourself. I'm not out of this order. This is this is. I, mean, I know everybody I said, in the let's village. Stop this. Everybody in the village sees what happens. Let's around. stop this, Mayor. Everybody in the village sees this, what happens. This is, I, I'm this, sorry. This is the public area. You can't take the truth here. This is the this public is the area. Truth. This is the truth. Oh, and you have the truth. The That's it. Are gonna know Come on, Mayor. Stop it. No. Stop it. No. You have people come. Like Robert and, and do stuff like this. Come stop on, it! Stop. I have nothing to do with this. Stop oh, it! You never have anything to do with anything. Stop you're, it! You're really good at not having taking any responsibility. Stop it! it. Yeah, why don't you abstain? Stop it! That's what you do well. Uh, reports from the village manager. Mayor, I have a report I want to read. Uh, last week, I received an email uh, from the chairperson uh, of the tree committee, and uh, it highlights staff and uh, people who are really taking uh, the tree committee and what they believe um, is important uh, in this village. So it says here, I received this on Tuesday, um, March 8th. Uh, Dear Jerry, I finished the agenda for Thursday's meeting this morning and realized it was laced with gratitude for the initiatives that benefit and protect trees through the village of Mamaronek departments. Jeff Hahn showed me the new tree diapers, dreadful name, that he wants to test for watering new trees. Mark Ferraro worked with Westchester Joint Waterworks to install equipment uh, in a way that would protect the roots of an established tree. Dennis Drogan is coming to the meeting to explain uh, the idea of a new hotline for reporting removals that may violate the tree law. An application to clear cut another property on or Orienta was denied. A floating branch was removed from the overhead wires on Melbourne. Uh, we've had author talks we have tree walks, we have pruning workshops, and we have a tree law, and it's being taken seriously. It is a gigantic advance in the village of Mamaronek culture around our village trees. Thank you, Beverly. I just want to give a quick update on the tree law, Mayor. Uh, since the beginning of February, we've denied the removal of uh, 25 trees. Uh, so in essence, we saved 25 trees. We approved the removal of six very um, uh, sick or diseased trees, um, which is 81% of the requested trees um, have been saved. And we issued one citation uh, with fines for the removal of three trees without a permit or approval. And so I just want the board to know that the tree law is working, that people are taking it seriously, that the staff is taking it seriously, and that the staff now knows that uh, trees are a significant priority in the village of Mamaronek. Other than that, Mayor, I have two, um, to, uh, two items to file for the record. One is the 2002 Southeast Consortium Interagency Agreement. And then the other is um, an agreement that I uh, signed with Whiteman Osterman for uh, the Tikrit appeal. That concludes my report. Thank you. Hmm. Great. Uh, um, you left out adding three things to the agenda. The appointments. Yeah, it's true. I'm going to go back. Uh, item 4M to add an item to the agenda. So move. Second. Second. Or we call roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Hedges? Yes. Yes. Mark? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the item added to the agenda is to appoint Ms. Laura Abani uh, to the Traffic Commission. Uh, Sally will tell her tomorrow uh, the length of her term. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Or roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Hedges? Yes. Lucas? Yes, with thanks. Okay. Yes. yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, item, item 3 O, add another item to the agenda. I need a motion. 
So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Item Q, add another item to the agenda. Any motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item R, uh, this is to add Ms. Sarah Mignano to yep. the tree committee. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so moved. Good. All, Second. Uh, call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Yeah. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, now reports from the clerk treasurer. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Uh, report from the village attorney. Uh, nothing from me tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, minutes, commission, boards and committees, minutes of the board of trustees work session and regular meeting, February 28th. Uh, minutes of the Recreation and Parks Committee meeting of January 12th and February 2nd, 2022. Minutes of the Budget Committee of February 1st, 2022. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review, January 4th, January 20th, February 17th, 2022. Hope everybody has a great St. Patrick's Day. Please head out to the parade on Sunday. We have uh, around this weekend. And a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.